<clears throat> Bro, did I tell you we're going to be in Disney World for the last two weeks of July? Yeah. We'll be there for two weeks, and we've got we only get uh, we only got ten day park tickets. So we got four days of like nothing. So if you want to hang out for a couple of days or whatever, that might be cool. I would love to. Let's see where like shots and stuff are because yeah. my wife and I are still pretty like strict quarantining. Um, but I mean, we're like desperate to get out to Disney right now, so yeah. that would that would be awesome. And like, yeah, I'd love to see you guys. Obviously, they're saying by May, by May there should be enough to where anyone who wants one can get one. You know, so. that would be awesome as long as there's like herd immunity because they're not going to have a pediatrics one for right, a while. Right, 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 right. All right, looks like uh, everything. Go. Uh, go to our faces now. What's up, everybody? Gustav, I am first because I said hello all. Oh, you <clears throat> did, did you? Man, I don't know what it is. Like, maybe I've been eating something, but I look kind of tan. You're <laughs> looking good, Matt. You're looking good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking kind of tan. I haven't been doing anything kind of orange. I you're, shave. Your kid, maybe I your shave. kidneys are failing. Yeah, let's <laughs> hope, right? <laughs> you look good because well, you, you're dying. It's not a big deal. Yeah, no, I'm the Death one drinking Red Bull. Come sooner. <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Choking on peanuts. All right. We got people here. What's up? What's Hello, up? What's up? People. What's up, my favorite person, Jeff Burns? <laughs> what up? What up, Wimbush? What's All right. What's going on? People filing yeah, in. We I got think a lot, we can lot of some people in the chat here. And start the recordings. Make sure you do a <clears throat> new audio file before you start recording, or else it'll just loop over itself from your test. And uh, you good on that? Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, and I'm good. Let me know when y'all are ready to record, and we'll hit. It record. is crazy to me that the chat shows up here before it shows up. I on know, YouTube. isn't that weird? That it's is like so weird. The API that they're using, they get it first. It's so weird. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna. I'm hitting record. Everybody else hit record. Let me know when you're rolling. I am rolling. Yes. Okay. I am rolling too. All right. And uh, we're gonna do a sync clap, which will be one, two, three, clap. So here we go. One, two, three. All right. Beautiful. It'll be a long show. <laughs> it always I is now. Yeah. <laughs> we basically are doing two shows. Right. Yeah. Although I do I like, like it, it when you say it's going to be a short show today, and then it's just yeah. not. I, yeah. Can we maybe can show. we just say that? It's gonna be a short. Let's show. just yeah. say it's gonna be a short yeah. show today. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All my notes, all my notes, my pages and pages of notes, ready to go. And, I love um, that y'all are already blowing up the chat. That's perfect. Yeah. Like, I love it when we can hit that 100 messages within the first, like, 20 minutes of the <laughs> right. show. It's great. It's funny. We get some <clears throat> awesome people in the chat today, too. Sweet. Yeah, we do. Yep. All right. I think we're good to go. <clears throat> and, uh, 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 yes. Uh, yeah. Everybody keep an eye on that waveform as we go, and uh, let's just get get right into this thing. <clears throat> Do it. All right. What's up, and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt, and joining us today is the future million-dollar NFT artist. <laughs> <laughs> People's giving and me a love. Our, our very, very good friend, Mr. David Brodeur. What's up, everybody? And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, working for the man. You can email us, info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show, questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, show topic ideas, artist suggestions. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com. Noob or expert, send us in what you want to hear about, and we will talk about it. And um, this week, we did get a lot of emails. We got some great emails from people. I, I don't have any of them specifically listed down, but uh, it's been like interesting keeping up with that world a little bit. So hopefully I, I didn't miss responding to anybody 
on that. Um, really kind words from a lot of people this week, which which is great. And uh, a lot of new listeners, too, I think, coming in from yeah. the crypto space and whatnot, checking out yeah. this MoGraph scene. I, I have no foundation invites for all you messaging me on all the different <laughs> places. They, they, cut so. it, they cut it back, too. So Yeah. yeah. And, of course, we'll you know, get into all the things later on. Right. <laughs> you know, we're trying to keep them separated. But uh, this week... I did want to mention uh, Brandon Clements. You should check out this bathroom piece that he did in Unreal. Yeah. Uh, it's up on his Instagram, and uh, that will just give you a little bit more of an idea of where his RTX course is going. We talked about his reel last week, his little reel to reel in real time. Is real time? Get it? <laughs> and, is Brandon uh, <laughs> in the chat right now? <laughs> he might be. I'm not sure. That What he's doing it in Unreal is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And that bathroom, all of that, that you're going to learn how to do all of that in his upcoming course. These are scenes from the course. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, he's getting he's getting through that. that He's over the hill on the recording of things, <laughs> which is good. I know it's a lot of work. And uh, can't wait to see it. Creating the Unreal. Make sure you check out Winbush's Unreal course, which is, which is out there already. And the, the new mm -hmm. JAMA packs that are in there. Winbush has been all over the dang place, man. I saw him doing, he was doing something with Mix Master Mike this week or something. He's yeah. posting on uh, Instagram or stories and stuff and, and such. And man. yeah, the thing with Mix Master Mike was nuts, though. Like, because like you look over at Mix Master Mike and he's like going at jamming. It. I mean, <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that motion capture's keeping up, too. Yeah. I guess he was wearing <laughs> the suit. Was it the. I guess the it's cocoa suit. suit, or I don't know what he was wearing, but yeah, when we're, cocoa suit, I want yeah. one of those suits, Dave. I think we should invest in buying oh one eventually. <laughs> I, I, and They're it's expensive. not the first time you've heard that. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Matt's like, well, we need one of those suits. I was like, yeah. are we gonna use it though? See, what I need to do is I need to get one for my kid and be oh. like, all right, now just go run around, do some stuff. There you, you know? go. Like, just wear him out. Yeah. You can upload all the things to, like, do they have sites where you can buy that stuff? Like, so besides, like, Mixamo, where you can buy, like, pre-made animations? Are there other sites like that? I don't know. Like Probably. There's got to yeah, be. Yeah, there's, there's one. I'm blanking on the name. I bet Winbush knows, or a few other people might know what it is. But there's there's definitely, like, a really big library. I think it sets uh, directly up into, like, Maya. But, like, you can get them and export them into any software. It's I funny. could be wrong, but... You'd have like I was a looking them up. stock site of just like kids goofing around, uh, yeah, like saved FBX files or something that she could bring in. Yeah, um, and also yeah, I'm surprised there's not more sites. That there's not what? Oh, more sites? More like site, that? Yeah, you know, like Mixamo and all that. It's like, yeah. you know, people would definitely pay subscription to to have access to like nonstop supply. I always feel limited to like you you go on them, and that's why the suit I guess is good because you can mm -hmm. you yeah. can then do it. But I mean, there's difference between an actor hopping in like one of those suits and like a you. 3D artist <laughs> yeah. hopping in one of those suits. You know, so it's like I wouldn't even confuse that. It's like there's <laughs> different ways of like showing things off better on yeah, screen. But sometimes, sometimes you just like you can't get that animation right, you know, and you just like oh, just let me do it myself. Yeah. Right? Yep. But it's like, it's like, uh, have you ever had a client where you're doing a project for them and you're like, okay, I need this sound effect, but I can't find this mm -hmm. sound effect. And so you just grab your microphone and you just do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I need a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. just record it yourself. Yeah. Winbush. I can't tell you the number of times I've recorded dings and pops and swooshes. Yeah. All because I needed the correct sound effect. Yes. Yeah, uh, Winbush said the Brococo has a motion capture library, and then uh, Phil says ActorCore is, I think, a site that has some of that stuff. I know there's stuff out there. Mm -hmm. I'm just yep. not aware of the name, so that's that's good to know. So, uh, also, Houdini Mark is uh, he's basically done with his updates to Houdini his yeah. Houdini course. We just got to you just got to roll them out. They're in editing yep. at the moment. It's a lot. Yep. He spent 157 hours on updating to uh, 18.5, and the way it's going to work is is if you have the course, we'll we're going to do a new version of the course, and we just add everybody onto there, so you can go back and look at the old one if you still mm -hmm. need it. If you need to go back and check your progress from an old one, so it won't we won't end up overwriting a whole bunch of things That's in smart. your That's account. Really you know, so if you if you buy it now. 
you will get the update, so don't worry about that. And then everybody moving forward will only get the new 18.5 version. And what else we got going on? We have got... Oh, hey, so this Thursday... Yes. And this is not a Thursday night special. This is actually a Thursday day special. Just wanted to make sure that... Oh, it is? Uh, <laughs> yes, it's at, it's at noon as usual. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, cool. Yeah, well, we're going to have a, a special episode of The Drop Live. This will be the first time we do The Drop Live. So yeah. uh, we were talking about last week, we've got Ariev and EJ slated to that to come talk with us about NFTs and things. But also joining us is going to be Clinton Jones. So yeah. I think that is going to be a fun, fun episode. This is going to, yeah, this is going to be a good episode. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be really good because I'm excited to see, you know, I, I haven't talked to Ariev and EJ too much, you know, since besides Ariev our texts and became things. a, yeah, became a baller. Right? <laughs> and so it'll be interesting yeah. to see okay. like, uh, his perspective on things and Clint's perspective on things versus like me, Dave and EJ were like just now mitten our first pieces and stuff like that. Right. You know? Uh, yeah. I, I, so I don't know. It, it's going to be, it's going to be cool. That's going to be very yeah. cool. And the other yeah. thing is that next week, we have been talking about this for a long time, but next week we're actually going to take one week off from the show, uh, from the regular Yay! podcast, because there's <laughs> just so much going on. And it's like no. adding that Monday is such a huge deal. Like it makes such yeah. a difference. And uh, yeah. we've just been going like nonstop, except for the power outage, of course. But that doesn't count. Yeah. Couldn't enjoy that. It doesn't count. So, uh, March that wasn't a nice relaxing break for you. No, no, it was not. <laughs> it was very cold. Um, so, so next week it's March 15th. It's spring break, right? So, I mean, that's the perfect time for us to take a little vacation and, uh, and go to our virtual beach as Lego characters, like the, the thing shows. Uh, so what we're going to do next week is on the podcast stream if you do have a podcast stream we will post the audio from the drop live in there in case you want to catch that if not mm -hmm. you just go ahead and wait till the next week and you're, we'll, yeah, if we'll you're be tired back. of crypto just, yeah, just skip it skip that episode but we just wanted to put that in there because uh usually that's in the show so this is a great way to do it because you'll still get that you'll still get the drops for that week that we're going to be talking about and then information um so Anywho, is that it? Give for, me one or? second, Dave. You keep going. My mother-in-law's calling me. She's watching my kids. So oh, make sure I, everything's all right. This. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Screen so, that call. So that is that is that right there. We don't have much in the the world of render engines for this week in particular. But what we're gonna do is uh, just go straight to the topics because uh, you know, David, you've been on the show before. We've talked about your background and things a lot. Uh, so. You know, we won't rehash the things we've already talked about because we have a ton of stuff that we haven't talked yeah, about. Let's, let's <laughs> jump into it here. So we can jump right into it. And uh, first of all, I just want to say, like, what's been going on with you for the last year or so since we've had you on the show? It's been it's been wild. I think, you know, I've heard you and Matt mention it, too. Like ever since COVID, it's been way busier than than normal. And things just seem to be kind of like ramping up still. It hasn't like plateaued. Like for a second, I'm like, all right, we can like level out. And then like <clears throat> NFT came. It was like, all right. And right back up again. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, with with like the, the virus hitting, I think there was like a month low where it was like, OK, like everything dried up. But then literally after like four weeks, it was just like nonstop and yep. absolutely nonstop all through the spring, all through the summer mm -hmm. um, and just continued. And so, um, you know, I don't know. I think that's like the best part about the industry we're in. And I tell this to artists all the time. A lot of uh, younger artists, the senior artists kind of already know this, but we are in, I think, one of the best industries in the world because if the economy's doing poor, well, a lot of these companies need to do better job marketing, and so they come yep. to us. Yeah. If the economy's doing great, well, guess what? They come to us because everyone they got lots needs of to, money to do some yeah, advertising. And they, yeah. Exactly, and they're trying to they're trying to outspend now. So it's like they they oh like we're in such an awesome spot. And then like to follow it up, we're on the cutting edge of like technology. I mean, already in this 
talk. We've talked about like motion capture. We're talking about yeah. Unreal. We're talking about <laughs> right. rendering. Like we're at like the cutting edge of all the new technology and every new technology pretty much looks like crap without who again, without us. And yeah. so yeah. whenever anything new comes, it's like new job market, new job. We're kind of amazing in every way <laughs> and everyone should just be bowing down to us. You're damn right. <laughs> And it's starting to happen. <laughs> and yeah. I was talking. I was talking to my in-laws the other day, and like you know, the one thing about the you know the whole pandemic and stuff like that, and us working from home, it's like I think we have gotten so much more work because of this. Because now studios and other companies are getting a lot more comfortable with remote workers. You mm. know. And so it's like, okay, well, you know, in the past, they may not have used remote workers because it was, you know, hard to deal with the infrastructure of all that or, you know, having to deal with Skype calls and blah, blah, blah. Now it's become the norm that, like, they're, all these studios are going to be so comfortable with it afterwards that all the remote workers and freelancers and stuff, mm -hmm. we're just going to be, we're going to be balling, you know? Yep. And not just that, like it took like a lot of like old corporate people to like get out of their like yes. comfortability of like, we're going to have a meeting. You have to sit in front of me. It's yeah. like, come on, man. First of all, let's all agree that this meeting is pretty much a waste of time. But yeah. second <laughs> of all, like, why do I even have to be here? And so like for me, I'm like, this has been like uh, absolutely fantastic having everything be remote and like, and that's it. It's just like set the standard and yeah. I'm hoping it doesn't go away. There's. I'm way more. Uh, I'm hoping efficient. the pan pan pandemic yeah, yeah. continues. <laughs> right. No, I definitely want the pandemic to go, but I hope the change of like mindset for like how business has to be run and become successful that way. I hope for me personally, I like the the change of like remote and being in any location and being able to like. I mean, you can pretty much travel while you're working. You know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. like it doesn't yeah. matter as long as you can take your machine with you. Absolutely. It's like okay, cool. So yeah. like. I can work this week in the Virgin Islands and like and the weekend I, I hang out or in the evenings or whatever. And then like yep. I come back and it's like you don't have to be tied down to a certain location. It's like just keep, get your work. Keep done. Parsec like and like, team viewer on yep. and then just log yep. in and start a render at home. You know? Yep. 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 And it's like every lunch now I get to have lunch with like my wife and my kids. I get yeah. to see them in the morning. Uh, I get to now, like when I'm done, like doing anything I do for the art college, I, I, I'm always like working outside of those hours, but like even the fact that my kids get to see me at various like 10 minute moments throughout the day, it mm -hmm. means absolutely everything because I'm like, they would never see me. They would yeah. never see me. And, yeah. um, so I'm just looking at all the upsides to the situation we're in and I'm like a far outweigh for me personally, um, the, the, the cons. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's really kind of nice, you know, every once in a while, get a get some of the people together that you're working with in a distancing kind of way and however you want to do that. And we've, we've been doing some in-person meetings lately, and it's like, wow, this is refreshing. Yeah. We can go sit outside, you know, like yeah. on the patio, talk to people in real life. It just – but you don't have to do it every day, which is great. Yeah. And you can go home and do your thing, and you get this balance, and you don't feel like you're just like – driving into work and commuting and, and doing the drudgery all the time. And something that, uh, of course, I'm always still worried about, despite everything coming in. It's like the more – this is what Liam uh, mentioned, I think, on Twitter this morning. It's like the more work comes in, the for some reason, the more nervous you are about getting more work. It's like right. – <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, it's it's – almost weird for me when work comes in and, and things are going okay to not be worrying about mm -hmm. the fact that it's cool we got work for days don't worry about it like money's yeah. coming in your, your paycheck is secure for a little while it's just so weird because it's it's that constant thing that's always in the back of your head and for yeah. some reason with this uh fortunate circumstance in this economy right now it seems like like people are getting a lot of work and yeah. uh i i'm i just i'm i'm floored because <clears throat> i've never felt so comfortable but at the same time it's never been such a weird environment and all, you know all the things going on in our lives and covid and all of that it's just so it's just so different it's and, and I'm, I'm wondering in the back of my head like with what's going on in the economy 
and everything and the way that people are coming to motion designers is it going to stay like this are we going to keep going is it going to get better or are we going to have another kind of like lull because matt and i back in the original crash of uh oh the you know late 08 early 09 the reason we met each other and fell into our jobs is because things were crashing and we fell into this market where we were doing terrible local commercials on a national scale and the reason that it was doing so well is Brodeur the same reason you brought up in the first place which is all these people needed this advertising because the economy was not doing well and as soon as the economy started doing better they started laying people off and so I hope we don't get back to that even if everything does better I hope that with all the new technologies that are going on and all of the things in all the new spaces right now, that that means that there's just going to be a a vacuum that needs to be filled with more motion designers. I really hope that is. And, and I was talking to my, my girlfriend uh, the other day and I was like this, the weird part about this is a year ago, if you would have thrown all these terms at me, in the NFT space and talked about all these new things going mm. on, I'd have been like, what are you, ta- what are these words? What are you saying? Your, yeah. your Genesis drop on Nifty with the <laughs> NFT. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> and I really uh, think it's weird because it's, it's making people get used to crypto currency. People are starting mm-hmm. to understand it. They're starting to accept it a little more. And it's like going into COVID, it was very, much a different world than coming out of covid we're going to come out the other side of this and it's going to be like what happened yeah and so we're going to start meeting back up in person it's going to be such a different world jeff was saying uh in the the chat new masked meetup dave i'll come down from two uh, Hmm. from tulsa no i don't i don't i don't don't think uh yeah you don't need a mask here you know you can just we can all just go to a restaurant together. But yes, we would I like to do this week with no mask. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we we would like to go at some point to start doing some meetups in a social distance yeah. kind of way. That that I think we would should. Be nice. I think we should have one. We'll figure it out. End of June. End of June. Go for it. How do you it. feel about that? You go for it. All right. <laughs> I don't. I'm know. gonna do a DFW C4D it's, meetup at the end no. of June. It's too, yeah. too early to even do that. The sucky part nah, is dude. our event, our place that we used to do events at, actually went out of business. So we can't it even did? go. Oh yeah, it went way oh, under. Oh man. <laughs> like in the middle of COVID. Yeah, we have to find a new place, and and I mean, it's gonna be a big ordeal. And um, my thought is that we could meet up in like you know a park or something where we can yeah. stay outside. Something like that. That's probably where it's going to start. A park. Yeah. Where yeah. where, to, where do you get where do you get the beer at? The you keg. Know. We'll go to okay. we'll go to yeah. Artie Ben uh like Yeah, maybe that parking yeah. lot. There you go. They're parking. We'll yeah. we yeah unannounced. Unannounced. Just show yeah, we'll up just in the parking up. lot with a keg. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, be, yeah. Mm-hmm. The meetups are going to be outrageous, though. Let's oh just say, gosh. here's yeah. the thing: like, I almost don't even want to have like these little, like, weird small ones before like everyone's comfortable getting out because then it's just going to be like kind of scrambled and you fragmented. You want to go balls to the wall? Yeah, it's just like Get NAB Vegas. Let's just all hold off for the next <laughs> Vegas NAB and just Oof. it'll be absolutely nuts. I think I think everything like all the stuff that they've been planning, like I think NAB is going to happen this year. I think it's going to happen. I'm 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 feeling real confident about Camp Mograph. You know. Like I'm telling, I already booked a vacation in July. I I think Disney World's gonna, gonna be you know done with their lockdown and mask stuff, you know. Well, hmm. Disney's actually course, being super safe though. Have you seen yeah. what they're doing? Like now, like I haven't left my house since last what March, and like that's this like super truth. Yeah. Um, but like I looked at what Disney was doing and now like I don't have like kids in school and so it's like if I, if I, my kids already had to leave I'd be like yeah screw it like they're already yeah. exposed and that now what like I'm just gonna like that's that's that um but like Disney's like spraying everything down wiping yeah. everything down and yeah. I mean I think you know it's probably pretty safe but uh even right now but you know still well um, there's they, also the, they, the amount of people at, at the park are like nothing yeah I'm really hoping that like everyone's still like cautious about it and then they open stuff up right as soon as we get there you know or right before and then we're like oh yeah we got we got no one's here we're just having the best time of our life 
this might be something that people don't think about, but I am not trying to wear a mask in Orlando in a July and I August. Know. You know, know. Yeah. that's going to be know. just one soggy, wet face mask yep. and it's like breathing in your own hot air. Yeah, I'll yeah. wait rather than do that. That's fine with me. Yeah, Billy said just, we go from lockdown straight to NAB. Like, oh my gosh. Dude, Nobody's even going to come see presentations. They're just going to be drinking yeah. the whole time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah. That's probably true. Yeah. It is <clears throat> going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, who's showing back up and, and how it's changed. It'll be nice to meet people for the first time. So I know we've yeah. met so many, we've met so many people online and like, you know, through like chats and slacks and stuff like that. We, we most of these people, we don't even know what they look like. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I haven't the, even the met Winbush in person. <laughs> so. Yeah, me, neither yeah. have I. That, that feels so weird. Have we that not? Like, no. Wow, yeah, we haven't, crazy? have we? I know. Wow, oh, that's so weird. Yeah, it doesn't feel... It feels like we've met, but... Right. We, yeah, it feels like we're best friends. Friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are best friends. We are. Yeah. Me and Winbush are totally best friends now. BFFs. He's coming to all my holiday parties, everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but the v- meetups are going to be... I think they're going to be so much cooler than they ever were. Not because of the pandemic, but because of all the new spaces that we're in. And so I've been like hanging out and chatting with a lot of different like collectors in the space. And, um, and they're all super amazing people. And, uh, and like really like super chill. It's like all people that we would be friend want to be friends with. And they're like, they love art and they love artists. And it's like, they're going to be coming to these events and mm-hmm. it's going to be awesome. And then we're going to add on other events for, you know, I, I, the, the crypto sites and stuff like that. And they're going to hold the events and we're, we're all going to go to that too because yeah. it's us. Yeah, I think I I think you're going to start seeing a lot of more local and like uh, local events or like you know uh, constrained to one specific country before you start seeing like big international events and oh, stuff yeah, like that. For sure. You know, yeah, because it, it's going to be a whole lot easier to contain things uh, in your own country versus international. It's it's going to be harder. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Phil. These meetups are he's in here, right? really important, though, as far as like community and uh, uh-huh. networking and and all of that. And you had a note; it's an EIZO. I don't know what that is. Yeah, is it- that's AZO. So AZO? I'm a I'm actually a, a, an ambassador for them right now, and they I I've met and hung out with them so many times because of like events like SIGGRAPH and NAB and stuff like that. So not like I I feel like I want to like stress to people too it's not just like about like getting to hang out with all your friends like of course like that's a major aspect uh maybe even the majority of the aspect but like go around to like the booths and see who's got like really dope products and Mm -hmm. uh and and just hang out with them and and you just connect with people and um and through that you know we started working together and i I guess we've been like we've done a couple projects together um and uh and then like yeah this this year i'm I'm a brand ambassador so um i'll be i'll give you some free monitors oh you gotta see these monitors yeah Um, they're, they're not they're not in yet but i'll be sharing some images with them like it like when i've gone to their booths before and stuff they're the best monitors I've ever seen in my life. It's it's like mind blowing. I'm like I don't even know if my work deserves to be up on these. <laughs> is it so is it the these... resolution or the color? What what is the? Uh... It, yeah, so so they have like built in color calibration and you know the contrast ratio. Like I I could like just drop all their notes. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a resolution. Uh, the the bit depth that they read as well. Like I guess most monitors are all very much limited in that stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think they're they're really entering in the art scene. And so uh, I highly recommend everyone like take a look. I actually have a, a podcast with them. It'll be a follow up podcast after kind of like my my kind of crypto art drop on mm-hmm. Nifty and. Like we're gonna like get together, and we've got like an awesome like chat that we're going to do as well. Um, that I'd recommend everyone go and just like get to know them more too, because they're very much involved and want to continue to be involved in like motion design and the arts and stuff like that. But like all this is like coming together because of like you know interacting. And like I will say this: when I land somewhere, like like for one of these meetups. I just like sit in my hotel room 
and like right up until the very last second i'm like i like i'm really like i don't want to actually go out and socialize <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm like i'll just like sit in my room and like goodfellas is on right now and like and that's fine like uh and, and like you like so for me like I force myself to kind of get out there and put myself in those kind of spots. And so it's not easy. So don't think it's like, for me, it's like, oh, well, it just comes naturally. So it's easy for you to go around. It's not, it's very uncomfortable. Um, but I've made so many amazing contacts because of that. So yeah, like once these meetups, um, even the digital ones like, like this, um, you know, once like, but once they break out and we start all getting to see each other face to face, it's like, go and then like yeah they're around and like introduce yourself to people at the booths like they're all there they're just like chilling they're like they're just like you you know and they're just hanging out and they want to nerd out and talk about what what they have going and they want to learn about you and if you use their stuff it's like just go up and just hang out and like ask them what parties they're going to after or what yeah it's like that's a that's major aspect it's like okay here's what we're doing in the day but what are we doing once this closes and it's like oh well we got invited to this party it's like oh we're going to this one you should definitely come to this one and it's like you just all it's just one big family so yeah it's it's like we're we're a bunch of extroverted introverts because it's it's, right we're we don't want to get out we don't want to like as soon as the show is over the lights turn off in here and i'm head down on the keyboard i'm 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 closed down for the day and it's like, it's really hard. Yeah, you just want to sit in the hotel room. It's relaxing. You get a break. And oh, I don't want to go to that. And then you get there and it's just like, what's up? You know, it's just yeah. like like Bud Light in 1999. <laughs> this has been the hardest thing for me over the whole pandemic because, you know, Dave, you know me. I'm, I'm schmoozy, Matt. I've right. always been, you know, all about the events, all about hanging out and talking. And I'm a very social person. That's why I keep my Slack open at all times and all my notifications because I like <laughs> I like being in the conversation and stuff like that. So this has been really hard for me actually having to work for the past year. You know, <laughs> Last week, Matt was sitting at the desk on Skype with me talking. And I just hear, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> That was my phone. Boop, not my, boop, not my butt. Boop. <laughs> yeah, not your butt. Yeah, constantly, <laughs> and it's just like, burr, burr, burr. and I'm like, oh my god, how do you deal with that? How do you deal most with that? Of the, most of the time, when it gets be, when it becomes too annoying, I I have to mute it. It's like someone you know? poking you in the face with a with a pen a little bit every couple seconds. Yeah, you get used to it. <sighs> yeah. When you got my kids, you get used to that. <laughs> Have you guys, I'd love to hear if you've experienced this because I totally have. Um, Before like the pandemic hit, when a client or anybody wanted to do like a FaceTime or a Skype or a Zoom, I'd be like, come on, let's just freaking pick up the phone. Like, like, just call me. Like, I don't like, just call me. I don't like when I get presented here, like turn a light on. Like, I'm just like nerding out on my computer right now. Just call me. And the pandemic like everyone wants to do video chats now you just and assume. i really hated it yeah and i really <laughs> yeah. hated it for a while but it's like it's really all that anyone's doing yeah and then someone did a phone call with me and i felt like i didn't know how to speak on the phone anymore <laughs> right because i was so used to like looking at someone's digital face yeah. and like seeing their response yeah. and i'm like oh my god i feel like i lost my ability to like read people read without person, seeing yeah. their yeah. face yeah, it, it can like be good wild. and bad because you can be doing other things and, and you don't have to be expressive in a phone call to other people. Mm-hmm. If you're in front of a client, like especially a new client, we, we haven't met half of our clients or even more in real life. Right. Yeah. They all just yeah. come to us and we never meet in person. So, so you get on the you get on a Skype call with them. You can read them, first of all, but you also have to be on. Right. Like you have to be yeah. like, hey, how's it going? I'm yeah. I'm going to do whatever you want because you're the customer. The customer's always yeah. right. And then when you're <laughs> on the phone, you're just kind of like straight faced and whatever. And that doesn't really much matter. So it's it's good and bad. And uh, I just assume nowadays that when someone wants to do a meeting, that it is a Zoom. Yeah. You know, sometimes it will like come up and they'll call me and I'm like, oh, you just want to talk on the phone? Well, how quaint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like a baby's it's toy. It's like a baby's toy. Yeah. <laughs> I like just send me a I, carrier I, pigeon with a message on it. Yeah. yeah. We've got, you know, we've got our good setup with our good lights and backlighting and stuff, you know, like. 
it's the one thing about the the Skype calls and the Zoom calls that I really like because I get to kind of show off my my setup, right? You know, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're you're, it looks so good. What are you What are you using?" It's like, yeah, I'm just I'm just that good, and it, it makes you feel like you know because you're in this video space and stuff like that. It's like okay, you understand basic lighting and a basic setup and stuff like that, and you know how to make this look good. I will know how to make that look good. Yeah. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Like Richard says in the chat, uh, on the phone, eye rolls. Because sometimes you do eye roll on the phone. Right. You know? Right. Or or the thing that we would do for a while before we started doing more of these calls is that you and I would be on Skype. Yeah. But they would be and on the Dave phone. And Dave would just be listening to me yeah, talking Yeah, we would just be client. typing or eye rolling Dave, at each other. They would be like, no, we can't do that. I was like, Bring it back. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 stop. Don't tell him yes. <laughs> to By tomorrow? We can't get it done by tomorrow. What are you talking about? <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. Um, I like to cause Dave's blood pressure to go up. <laughs> yeah. It's been doing all right lately. It's getting, yeah. it's getting better. It's been yeah. getting better. Um, you're, you're at the school at in, in Florida, the... Uh, um, why is my head blank right now at Ringling Ringling College Ringling. of Art and Design? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm interested now to know, though, how you're dealing with getting students into jobs in this weird time. Like, how is somebody going to, like, for example, internship anywhere or get an introductory job when they can't actually go anywhere and learn from people in that way? That seems like it's going to be very a difficult hurdle for some students who need that that nudge to get into their first job. Yeah, I'll start off with this first. Uh, James Gardner, he's he's been in the chat hanging out. He was uh, he was a, a, a student of mine, amazing, super talent artist. I think he's at IF right now. He was uh, he was in the chat earlier at least. Um, so shout out to James. Um, also, yeah, like so. I think my classes are super badass right now at the college being remote. So I have more time with the students. I have more time outside of class time as well. And so I can give more to them where like before it was like, no, like all my time outside is like, you know, in other meetings for the college or something like that. And so like, mm -hmm. if I don't, it's like, all right, well, you know, who wants to come and hang out with so-and-so? It's like, I had uh, Blake Catherine come and chill with me in my class. I had uh, Beeple come chill with me at uh, Barton. Nice. Um, yeah, like I, um, Jess Herrera. Uh, and like, and it's like just super chill, just like, like just as friends, like zero pressure, just come hang out just like we are kind of right now. And like the students can just participate and like ask you questions or whatever. Um, and, uh, and, and so like the classes I think are better and, and for me teaching remotely is better as well because I do a lot more technical based stuff. Um, you know, obviously like I'm not just sitting there teaching you the buttons and the software, mm -hmm. but you know, a, like a lot of what I'm doing mm -hmm. and like, and my critiques and feedback and people like ask for help on certain things. Uh, and so like I do a lot of demos constantly. And being able to like record all those um, is really fantastic, and uh, and like setting up the remote is just like it does that for you naturally. Um, but then as far as like internships go, so this was a like, like absolutely crazy and awesome thing that happened last year, right as the pandemic hit. It hit like the students that were trying to get interns. Um, right at that period where like the internships were like really kind of getting solidified or they were like trying to get them right at that moment. And like every studio was like internships are canceled and, and the studios that they wanted to work for were gone. Like they were like, they were, like, no, we where we stopped it. And they're like, Oh, I missed it. What I recommended to them, a lot of my students were buying their own personal machines and I'm like, your machine's pretty dope. You know, like as an intern, they're going to put you in a machine just like that or maybe even a little bit less. And so I was like, hit them up. And they're like, but they said they're not taking interns. I'm like, who cares what they said? If you tell them that you have a professional workstation set up and you've been working like that now in my course for the past two, three months mm -hmm. by the time you get to them or whatever it is, four months by the time you get to them and like you are like set up and ready to go. You've got good internet connect, mm -hmm. like sell yourself on what, and, and they did. 
and they got the internships. Like nice. the companies that were not doing intern. It's like, yeah, of course they're like they're not doing because they don't want to babysit somebody and like and try to keep you active and like is this really worth if if we're going to pay you uh, for your internship but if you can prove to them that you are like a professional they don't have to babysit you you're good to go as is your setup it's like it's like a seamless transition so i keep telling that to everyone as well now some students like really want to travel and go and be at that studio and some studios want that well then that's like that's easy if you're cool with it um uh, and they're cool with it uh you know and your level of comfort with the pandemic is like all makes sense well then obviously like, you're good to go then just go do it as normal but if you're not i really do feel like there's still a lot of opportunity if you set yourself up for success in that in that way now, if you don't have a, own your own personal machine and you're like trying to do it off like your laptop or a phone, I think it's probably going to be a pretty big uphill battle to sell them on a remote internship. And you might not even get anything out of it. So, Are your students all basically virtual at this point? Is there any physical on location activity? Yeah, so the, the college... Um, it allows it to be up to the students if they want to be on location or not. Mm-hmm. And But it's there's barely any students on location and if they are they like never really go into the classroom they're just in their dorms like kind of chilling um and uh you know i mean i they're they're most of them are all remote though right now i was just curious about barrier to entry on that because what if somebody was going there and they needed a good computer to do this work on you know like in a classroom and now they don't have that is that barrier to entry Mm -hmm more difficult do they have resources to get what they need yeah so the college gives them all like a zbook laptop which is like i don't know it's kind of whack um (laughs) but it's something (laughs) you know it's it's like it it gives you something like they can do stuff you know they can do an intro to 3d course on it Uh, but not only that they have a really good remote uh connection as well so it comes down to just your personal wi-fi could be the hang up so you just got to make sure that your house has good wi-fi mm-hmm. and then you can get remote desktop into any of the on-campus machines as well okay. and they've got like cool. a massive render farm mm-hmm. and stuff like that too um and so like that's kind of nice um but like if you really feel like you need to be there to be in those labs like that we've got like an audio suite and all that kind of stuff well then i mean you gotta te- like i'm never gonna like force someone's comfort level like i said yeah. i haven't left my house since march um <laughs> of last year and uh and so you know whatever your comfort level is if you got to weigh out some decisions you know i i don't i don't know what else to say there yeah speaking of not not leaving your house your beard's on point i think you've it trimmed is. it back a little recently i think when I, I saw I you did. last week you were getting pretty it was, shy of- it's it's <laughs> um yeah it was getting very like shy gone crazy shy yeah, yeah yeah right now i'll be honest it's at the point where it's getting unruly again yeah. um but it's just a time thing and i'm an artist so trim, i don't really just care just trim the neck beard yeah, you know yeah. get rid yeah. of that henry david throw neck beard part you know and then it just feels like cuz this this is not trimmed at all it's just only the neck beard this morning, and it, it, it looks better. It I definitely like. helps. It makes you feel better just to get rid of the neck beard, so you don't yeah, feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. you should be I'm thinking in the of basement shaving eating everything. Cheetos. I'm thinking of shaving everything but the neck beard, you know? <laughs> Oof. That's Henry David Throw. <laughs> yeah. Starting a new trend. It's called <laughs> How the pictures Ugly of Henry David Throw. All he has is just a big neck beard. It's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be doing the motion show? The Maxon motion show? I am. I'm doing it. I think I'd have to look at the calendar. It's the April 15th. The April I think. one. That's like a, I believe, a three day event one, right? That's the is one. It, yeah. Is it the 14th or 15th? I forget. So whatever the yeah. last day is of the of the show. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll be doing it. And then I, I think I go and then Beeple goes after me. Uh, they were like, do you want to go after Beeple? I'm like, no. <laughs> Beeple, like, am I going after Mike? No, that's the shutdown of the show. How do oh, you yeah. follow that up? You right, can like, never right, recover no. from that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'll go before him, though. No way am I going after that craziness. Yeah, that's going to be, I guess that would be the 15th of April on a Thursday. Yeah, I, so. I think that's what I have on my If calendar. that's the last day. Yeah. Yeah, but no way, man. You, you, the people segment is going to be 
God knows. It's going to be year. interesting to see him because I, I, I mean, I haven't talked to him much since like, you know, his big drop and stuff, just an occasional message here and there. But man, I, I'm interested to see if he goes more crazy or if he stays just regular people crazy. Well, you know? he'll put regular his, people, he'll put his yeah, hand out and you have to kiss his ring before you can talk to him. <laughs> Uh, for he's sure, got a, uh, he's got a, a ring with uh, with uh, Buzz Lightyear's face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That would be good. <laughs> yeah, oh, the Don, Don B. Right, yeah, right, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, I I have a feeling. Yeah, he's not going to associate with any of us anymore. He's going to get all new friends and probably grow a mustache. That's <laughs> right. My, right, right, that's right. My oh my for, gosh, can for, you imagine a mustache? Mustache Mike, yeah. that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Like a curly one, like a oh like a, yeah, yeah. I was thinking dolly, like eighties right? porn star one, but a curly one could be cool. I think I think curly curly stash people, <laughs> curly stash people. <laughs> right, I think, I think that like would a cool fly. fire one, cool fire, a one. cool fire stash. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, um, a monocle. a monocle. Who's gonna Photoshop that? Someone's got to. Oh, somebody Photoshop. Will. Make it a T-shirt, Matt. Yeah, you probably yeah. hate yeah. that line. <laughs> you got to make him look make like. It, Make Dolly. it and then sell it as an NFT. I'll buy is that it, one as yeah. long as it's reasonably priced. We'll get to that later. Isn't that there, could um, be a raid zero attachment? One there of, you go. Uh, it was toys like little accessories. Right. Could be a mustache that you can clip onto him. Yeah, but Dolly, I'm trying to look at pictures of Dolly. He had the long mustache. He it, yeah, he did. He did. Like yeah, yeah. Wait, like up to his eyes. Yeah. Can somebody do that? Yeah. Come on, <laughs> somebody can Photoshop that, right? All right. Um, also, you had a note here about Max on One and the student edition. Yeah, uh -huh. so like, this is why I hate Twitter. Um, uh, probably, well, there's many reasons. There's, but I was this is say. like the biggest. Yeah, there's biggest. The biggest one is that like any criticism like does really well on there. Like someone was like, "How do you get followers and likes, and how do you get people to pay interest in what you're doing?" And like, I didn't respond back because I was like, I mean, if you're if you like criticize stuff like and put stuff down, like everyone like fees off of that. Um, but like something that was bothering me was uh, Maxon and Redshift and Redshift not having like a student subscription base to it. Hmm. And and I put that out there and I was like, you know, because like I saw that Maya had just done it with Arnold and like and then like, you know, Blender's got all these free ones. Maya, their biggest competitor, had one. And so I just like put that out there and it like blew up right which i thought it, that's what i was hoping because i wanted to get some light to it but then they like of course what does maxon do like a couple months later if that they come out and release maxon one and it's like boom everyone gets this red giant everyone gets maxon cinema 14 everyone gets redshift and i like shouted it out and it did like a quarter of the traction i'm like you know right. what man i'm not gonna do that ever again because i don't like that that's not that's not what's up i wanted that to do like quadruple what the first one did let everybody right? you know, know? And yeah so, yeah so like i'm not like that'll be the last time i ever like criticize like a company that i love uh, like in hoping that they like, hear it and like they make that change well they definitely um, heard I'm it just, like yeah, they did. Yeah. They, they hit me up after, you know, of course, like, you know, Paul's amazing. They're like, you, you son know? of a bitch. You know what we had to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul's like, yes, we, we, we hear you. And like, we have it in the plans and just like, awesome. watch, like, we, we've got it in this. And, and he was like, super cool, obviously. Like, he knew that it was like all love. And like, I want Cinema 4D to be like everyone's favorite software. Like, that's it's my favorite. It's our favorite. And mm -hmm. it's like, so like mine is coming from like, like you got to do this to like keep everyone here um, and loving it and give people access to it. And of course they did, but I'm not, I'm not freaking getting on, but yeah. So like Maxon ones, awesome. Like, so now like any student, and I honestly think like it's early right now cause it's only been a year, but give it a little bit longer. Now that students have free access to Maxon cinema 4d, they have free access to Redshift and red giant. I mean, I think that's going to be a big push for Redshift yeah. in the industry. Definitely. I think it was just, I think it was the the that will, uh, that will decision be a big, on Maxon's part. That'll be a big push for Red Giant products. I can see that happening for because, sure. Because, like, I mean, how many of us, when we were like fresh in the industry or you know just starting at a studio or something, how many of us were like, oh, Particular, boy, I'd love to have Particular one day. You yeah. know, maybe one day I can afford Particular. You know, but if it's like if you're learning 
particular and uh, uh, super comp and like all these other plugins way before you even get out. It's like, oh man, that, that puts them at a huge advantage. Yep. Yeah. And, and so like, that's how I feel right now about Octane because Octane doesn't offer the free yeah. student. And I'm just like, come on guys. So I've already, I, I didn't tweet it, but I yeah. did talk to them. I talked to them directly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That. I, I saw a, a comment about that the other day with, with Otoy and someone's like, oh, well, you can't afford it. Just go do Blender. But like, I, I think people want to get on Cinema 4D process. and they can't. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that thought process. We'll just go do something that's free. Well, no, no, you shouldn't have to. You know, you want to support the soft software that you want to support, you know? Well, asking know. you you shall receive on, on the Beeple thing here. Kevin Rupp sent me this. I think this is close enough to what we were <laughs> All right, that's for. very good, yeah. With yeah. the quickness. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. I think I think this already was out in the ether somewhere. I don't know if Kevin made it or I I saw this somewhere last week. I can't remember where. It's all a big blur. I love the, ma the mouth breathing that's going yeah. on there. <laughs> that's great. That's funny. Uh, anything else in in your world that's going on? Any other uh, projects that you're working on besides in the NFT space? Uh, or yeah, that can't come yet. Right, that's at the last half yeah. of the segment. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean darn I, I i like i i know i've been like super slammed like i'm not gonna like call out any specific project oh one one project i had I, I i think this could be a fun conversation so it was a music video i did for a, uh i i can't even say the name so like it still mm -hmm. be good conversation mm -hmm. um and a uh, pretty established uh artist and i did it i think it was like a four minute mm -hmm. yeah four minute, 11 second music video all 3D, and I did it in four weeks. And um, okay, dude, it had character animation. It had Ooh. all sorts of stuff. In it. Was and, it from scratch? Straight yeah. from scratch all the way to the end? Yeah. Wow. Man. And it was like absolutely nuts. And I finish it, and the artist decided he wanted to change something. And like it was after all, everything was approved. And I'm like... Mm -hmm. Of course, I'd be happy to change it. Like, I'll, I'll put a, a new budget together for like the the extension on the project, mm -hmm. and it was like crickets. And then like a week passed, and I was like, hey, just following up on this. Like, you know, I said we can we can still make those adjustments. Uh, did we get approval on the budget? And then they canceled the project, the whole thing. What? And it, what? It canceled the entire freaking music video, and I think it's I think it came out dope. And I'm like wow okay so now i can't share it's a weird spot because i always protect myself with my contract but dealing uh -huh. with like a record label i was kind of handcuffed like i was able to change yeah. a few things in it but to, for the most part it was like i was kind of stuck with what they had um like i was like i can show it in my portfolio like i got all that kind of stuff in there and like mostly the big one's always like making sure i get paid within x amount of time right except my and stuff like that and they agreed to all that um but the one that i didn't get in there was that like if if it gets canceled like after like i don't know have you guys had that where i'm like if i knew i wouldn't be able to show this i would have i would have charged more mm. yeah but they said i could show it but now that it got canceled and it's not released yet and it's a song that they're postponing i can't right put it in. interesting huh. yeah you the that thing is, is, if the contract said... If the contract says you can, you can show, show it, it... But does it say you well, can show it after it's released in the contract? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there uh, might have okay. been And it was like, I can share... like Because I can't like start publicizing the song prior to them announcing what the song is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and like I was like, that totally makes sense. Like You don't want me to like, so be the Is it first. never going to be shown? Just there. put some different music behind it and say, hey, check this right. out. This is my... <laughs> this is the kicker. The musician was like, I've got a friend that does 3D oh. and, and, and try to jump on it. And I'm like... Can you give me the files? That was, was that the next yeah, question? No, I didn't give any files. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I made sure that was in there. Yeah. Um, but like they do have the edit, you know, the, like the final thing. But no, I never give my 3D files... Um, unless it's like maybe a studio and like I'm um, doing like a style frame thing, yeah. but I, I really never give files um, yeah. away. It was 
But, but yeah, we, so I'm like, I don't know how your friend's going to do that. He's just going to take a big loss because the work that's there that you want to change is a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So, we have a we have a thing in our contracts that say uh, um, we will still get paid even if your client you know cancels the project or whatever because we got burned on that previously. Yeah, I mean, even, I'm, I'm sure you you got paid for it, right? Yeah, yeah, I I had that That's in there, good. so it was like that yeah. wasn't the argument. But I'm like, it's more just like a bummed out thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah I totally. thought it came out dope. I like crushed it for four weeks straight for a yeah. four minute 3D animation, right? And then it's just like that's it it's just gonna live on my hard drive and i'm yeah. like i'm just it's more a, a bummer in that way uh yeah. but yeah it's like no i got paid they paid me 50 percent up front and then 50 percent within the first week after that's our good. final date so it was like yeah i got paid but it was still a that's bummer good. and we let got, me ask you a question we, we got that in you, there too for people who you know try and pull the old well my client's not actually going to use it so we don't need to yeah. pay you mm-hmm. that comes from yeah. back in the old uh what was the name of that website clients from hell.net yeah. <laughs> that that's what made me put that in there. But it's along the lines of what we always talk about which is you have to think of every excuse in the book to put into your contract and keep it evolving. So that's another one to keep in mind if you're doing the contract yeah. if this isn't used for its full intent and we're still able to show certain things put it in there. Yeah. Let me ask you this cuz I I was having a shower thought today. As I was taking my shower, I was listening to like a band that I really love. Was it you know, ska? I was just it was ska. No, wasn't it? it was actually well. I'll, I'll tell you how I got to that. Okay. I was listening to some some ska music, mm-hmm. and like uh, there's been uh, the band Mad Caddies did a prop a ska cover of a Propagandi song, which was really really good. And so I started listening to Propagandi, and then one of the uh, players from Propagandi started the Weaker Thans, which is one of my favorite bands. So I was listening to the Weaker Thans this morning. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, because like in college, uh, while I was in college, like they were they were my jam. Like every project I did um, was all using the weaker than's music and stuff like that. And I even I was thinking to myself, man, I would love to contact them and say, I want to do a music video for you for free, you know? And I was th- because because there are a few artists like I, the Weaker Thans would be one or um, the Mountain Goats. Like if one of them hit me up and said, hey, you want to collaborate? I would be like, yes, let's <laughs> do it. You know, are there any artists or anything like that? What what would be what would be the your ultimate? I will do this work for free job, if if any. Uh, Kanye West. I OK, would do, I would work with him for free. OK, um, huh? that that might be it i love kanye man you can you can hate on like maybe like his politics or whatever but i'm talking like artistically yeah. um artistically I, I think he's absolutely brilliant and one of like the greatest hip-hop minds of all time um who else would i work for free for larry david that's probably yeah. like, uh i would i would probably do anything for larry david as well for free whatever i don't know what we would make but yeah i think i think that's it there's not very many other musicians that i would just work for like totally yeah. you do a collab for? with him dude yeah with who with with larry david with, with Con- oh yeah with- larry david it- and kanye together <laughs> yeah. there you go ultimate wow, that mashup would be, that would be wild kanye um, just says something crazy and then cuts to larry david just kind of shrugging <laughs> and looking at the camera the music playing and that's the drop yeah. that's the whole thing yep. yeah yes um, obviously, like, I guess, like, if, like, I mean, you'd have to just pick, like, some of the most prolific people in your mind or some of your absolute people that you love. Like, I guess if Elon Musk didn't want to, like, get the money together, but he was like, yeah, it's just going to be me and you and we're going to do something, like, super creative. It's like, yeah. you'd be stupid to, like, be like, no, I need yeah. you to pay me. It's like, no, do the project with Elon Musk. Like, right. yeah. you're going to make right. millions from it, you know? Like, yeah. um, so I don't know. Like, I'd weigh out opportunities like that, too. Um, Those are real and- exposure dollars. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are real exposure dollars, exactly. Yeah. So I would probably do anything for free if I if I believe that it's real exposure dollars like that. Yeah, right. I think that would be an interesting uh, thing to add to MoGraph recommends. You know. Yeah. What's your ultimate? I would do this work for free, John. Yeah, it's a good. You question. know, that yeah. is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> because I like my I, two. I like... They're like so weird and opposite. Kanye West and Larry right. David. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, man, it's funny. You were expecting those answers, I'm sure. Nah, no, not really. That's okay. I'll make the a... Kanye, I can see. Larry David, not so much. But, yeah. Yeah. Omega I'm Fox says, place an I NFT feel, feel on like... the moon. That's a good idea. I feel like if Kanye heard you say that, you know, he will probably hit you up now. Anyone uh, have a hookup with Kanye? Hit him up. Man, that is literally... <laughs> okay, Omega really touched on something good here. If you and Elon could pair up and do an NFT that then remains on a hardware uh, a hardware device, oh. and then you go to the moon, you see the... See the literally to the yeah. moon. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I just gave you a billion dollar idea right there. Come on. Right. I, right. I, It'll I, only cost a billion dollars to get it to yeah. the moon. Of course, it's Omega Fox's idea. But right, right, right. But but we're we're collaborating. We're collabing on like I like Gosh, this. Could you, could you imagine? So you yeah, you you mint an NFT. Sorry, this is NFT talk. You mint an NFT. <laughs> And then you shoot it up to the moon. Yes. And then the first person who can get that NFT, right? It's going to be worth so much money. It's going to be priceless. It's going to be the most, the most, you know, uh, uh, the most expensive piece of art ever made. And then you do a prize yeah. for the first person who can retrieve it. Yeah. Because you know it'll be like it. hundreds of years they, before somebody else gets yeah. up there and finds it and retrieves it, right? Oh, that's oh for cool. sure. Man. It would radiate. Man. Great idea. Last. Oh. All right, Omega. Let's why, work. Why on you got to ruin our fun, Kentaro? Why wouldn't? Well, it, couldn't you wrap? Couldn't you wrap it, it in like water? Like that's what they do with the spaceships, right? It's got like a a layer of uh, water between yeah. the astronauts and outside as well. Yeah. It's for good. for UV. I'm sure they can come Just up with a way. Put so it in a Ziploc bag. It. It'll be fine. Actually, yeah. doesn't isn't a plastic bag also very good at uh, like radiation no and all of that? You know. No, or no. okay, oh here's what you do. You you the attach it. Duct tape. You attach it to uh, a, a a hardware device, right? But the mm -hmm. passphrase to recover it is written on a sheet of paper that's on the moon. There you go. There you go. Okay. Or or you could yeah 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 <laughs> like you could scrawl the passphrase phrase or like onto the, a uh, yeah, onto a an etching onto something you know marble yeah, or yeah, yeah. metal yeah. like the record yeah. you know in voyager that kind of thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally this is really coming yeah. together i think we should clip yeah, this think, send yes. it to elon yeah you know he's already thinking about this of course maybe maybe he'll let us borrow one of his rocket ships <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, See, Billy said the same thing. Just the paper through, uh, seed phrase. It's the seed phrase. Yeah. yeah. No hardware wallet needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There Perfect. you go. All right. I think we got a plan. I, th I say we yeah, just propose done. this. We got to get Omega on that because you started the whole thing yep. here. Come on, yep. let's do this. Let's all collab and make it happen with Elon. Totally. Yeah, we Omega's like, pull. maybe I'll let you guys in on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. like, what makes you think I haven't already? Right. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, Mega says radiation is erasing ink on the moon. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, but it's like an etching. Okay, we'll have to it's etch like, it. It has to be yeah, future proof. Etch it into like gold or whatever. Or Honestly, like, it only has to l yeah. last long enough for us to get established on the moon, where you know, right. like the general people going to the moon right. on vacation can like try and find it. It's like the ultimate geocache. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. And you get that. You enter the passphrase. Yeah, and it recovers the wallet, and then you're rich, right. beyond rich. your wildest dreams. Yeah, and then you find out later that uh, Nicolas Cage has already kidnapped every the time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> yes. How does he do it? All right, <laughs> we're gonna steal the NFT on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, this made so many great twists, man. What a great conversation. See, these type of NFTs can fit in a segment because it's kind of more just like high talk than it is right. like... High talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What have we put? You ever seen an NFT? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we? <laughs> oh, we? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay. Uh, that's, that's All right. Well, <clears throat> I'll do the Instagram story. We'll tag Elon in it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> 
<laughs> please do. Please, please do. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We'll just put it, we'll put it out there. We'll say this is this is the idea, Elon. If you'd yeah. like to come back to us and give us some credit, we would love yes. we would love that. Yes. You know? You know? Just give me like It would be the most bucks. priceless piece of art. And and oh oh what it is, it's just, it's just a, a dogecoin face. Yeah, that's like, all it is. It's, <laughs> it's got to be something really <laughs> stupid whatever it is. Right. Yeah, I agree. With Elon Musk, maybe he's just trolling everybody, and it's just like an empty clue when you get up there, though. Right? Yeah. It's the like biggest, the sorry, biggest troll in the world. Your NFT yeah. is actually on Mars. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's just a no. Yes. Planetary, inter, <laughs> interplanetary crypto scavenger hunt. Yeah, and it, it says your NFT is actually on Mars, troll face. <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's good. I like it. All right, yeah. so I got some links here, real quick. And uh, I'm also going to have to... I'm, I need a catheter installed at the desk at this point, I think. <laughs> got to stop drinking so much coffee. Man, I just had a Red Bull, that's why. So, okay. Brandon Clement's uh, bathroom I talked about already. Make sure you go check that out. Also, I wanted to mention uh, that JAMA came out with a new Wild West collection. Ooh, fun. So, JAMA do, does all of these different uh, characters. He did the uh, free assets, the night packs that you can get you can also get the discount on the rest of the packs if you're somebody who's taking the course uh Winbush's course and then he's also got the apocalypse stuff on his site i'm going to put a, a link in the show notes so that you can check out um everything on the site but now this wild west collection and i have so many dang notes that i i can't even find it at this point but i am going to try and find it so so jama does like crazy storyboards has worked on all of these big projects uh, and including uh, Mandalorian, I believe, and I have almost found it. Here it is. Uh, the Gumroad JAMA page, you can see all of it here. So uh, you got all of these really just gorgeous-looking characters so here. So high-res, looks so good. Wild West collection, crowd characters, and uh, let me bring How much are they? up full screen here. Uh, individual freelance license for this character here is $99 and a thousand dollar studio license. But, uh, just check that guy out, man. It's looking good. It's so good. And I believe, let me just double check this, that they are fully rigged now. So this is something wow. that you can bring into like Unreal Engine, Unity, Blender, 3D packages. Just imagine like you do a Rococo suit and you just attach it to this dude and you are off and running. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. Great? Imagine the types of things my kids could do with a Rococo suit with those <laughs> Wild West characters. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That would be really funny. <laughs> I think you should figure that out and make it happen. Honestly. You know, just Gibbs. Just... Winbush said he'd, he'd hook us up with the Roco Rococo people. Really? Let's, yeah, let's dude. do this. We might have to. I will. I will yeah. gladly do some tutorials. Do they have a kid's for... size suit? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, these are fully rigged, when Bush, and he, and he was telling me about that, that everything moving forward was going to be fully rigged to work with these. It's really cool. That's so awesome. So we got to get that lined up. Uh, that would yeah. be really awesome. And uh, any other links? Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention last week, somehow this I, I lost this link, but Gabby, who is Feeding Wolves, who uh, mm -hmm. we actually like regram a lot of her stories where she's working in Unreal with her capture shoot suit. It's not the Rococo. It's the other one. What is it called? The I don't know. Uh, something or Orinoco? Am I am I close on that? What's the name of it? I, I don't, don't remember. Uh, see, I don't know these Unreal things. This is all. I'm old now. Okay. I'm old. I can't learn anything new. Way to go. Nothing Way else go. can enter my brain at this point. <laughs> only, Without pushing only something else out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember my kid's name. No, it's ah. like yeah, it's like uh, Family Guy. Oh, now I don't know math. Like it's just. <laughs> X sense, that's what it is. And so she posted something on Facebook that kind of shows her workflow and, and how it works because X sense has some really good like software to, to smooth the motions out and all of that. Oh, and that's kind of cool. like refine everything after you do the recording. So she shows kind of that process and then hands, she's got the hands and everything. Just imagine where that's going when you've got that and the suit and the hands yeah. and then you got their new. Uh, the hands are cool. The the character thing that's coming out. What is it called? The Unreal character. 
thing that they announced Although. that's probably going to they don't know oh the facial thing the, yeah. the faces yeah i don't remember what it's called like um character builder Win- or something like Winbush that Winbush knows he'll write it in yeah there. we should why am i on the show we should just bring Winbush right. on i know <laughs> i got nothing for you here yeah. we'll just slide him in yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah meta humans thank you jeff meta so humans. that's gonna be like so great so just make sure you check out her stuff she's just she's doing so much in that space and uh so it, it's <clears> really fun she was on the unreal special the showcase the student showcase that we did so you can check out her stuff there as well so i don't believe now that we have anything else left to do except to go to the drop you want to go to the drop? Let's go to the drop. All right. What's up? Welcome to this week's episode of the drop, um, uh, where we talk about all things cryptocurrency, uh, crypto art, NFTs, uh, the future of NFTs, and uh, all, all the new artists and stuff who I need to write this stuff down like you do. Mm-hmm. Um, all the new artists who are making drops this week, as well as all of our friends who are making drops and uh, notable artists within the space um, who have and will be making drops. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. We're going to start off, um, I guess, the two big uh, drop sites that are coming this week. We've got uh, uh, Nifty and Maker's Place. Let me go ahead and bring my notes up for this. Um, And also, we'd like to mention that in this episode, Brodeur is going to make some sort of announcement here very very shortly. Yes, we are. It's a big announcement. Yeah. it It is huge. So... Very excited about this. Um, your drop's on the 15th, right? Yep. One week and from today. One week okay. from today. So yeah. we will be pimping it next week as well. But make sure to uh, keep listening. Um, as far as this uh, this week's drops, um, the uh, Nifty Nifty this week has a whole bunch of art, like not artists, but like musicians. I've noticed, mm. like DJs and stuff like that. And so, like, not a ton of not a lot of like MoGraph artists. You know, I, I really like to you know because it's the MoGraph podcast. I really like to focus on a lot of the MoGraph artists. But I picked out a couple that I think are like notable, mm-hmm. either because of like you know the industry that they're in or different works and stuff like that. So um, uh, the first one we've got is actually a MoGraph artist. um, And I'm sorry if I mispronounce anyone's name. It's uh, uh, Andreas uh, Wannerstedt. I'll say that. It's a tough one. Yeah, they have these super, uh, super fun, like highly satisfying looping videos and stuff. And I'm I'm, I'm curious. I was watching. I was like, man, how, how do they do that? Because it's like... It's like all done with textures or something like that, which is really cool, you know. Uh, uh, I, I'm assuming they would just create like three or four different textures and then do, you know, some uh, sort of mixing. With yeah, something. some sort of mixing with them. But uh, super excited! That one's today. So um, if you're listening to this on Monday or if you're listening to it after Monday, you can go back and pick it up in the secondary market. But um, I think those ones, I, I think that one's really pretty. It's it's if if you're a MoGraph artist or if you're looking to collect MoGraph artists, you know, I, I would definitely recommend this one. Um, the next one, not a MoGraph artist. This one's actually a band. Um, I believe it's the band Gods with a Z. Um, they're releasing, and I, I, I noted that I, I noted this one because I thought it was cool. It's another thing that's showing off, you know, what you can do with uh, NFTs and stuff like that. Um, so this band is actually releasing their music video on Nifty. You know, so this is uh, the what you're watching right now is actually just an example that they posted of their music video. And I think it's super cool. You can actually own a musician's music video and stuff like that. Super, super cool. And one thing to note, and I'll put this in the uh, show notes for this, too, is that uh, Kings of Leon released yes. uh, an NFT album daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's been a lot of talk uh, in uh around the nft stuff i've i've been seeing i've been seeing nfts and i don't know if like you know the tiktok algorithm is just so good you know that it's picking up everything else but i've been hearing even so many people talk about nfts and stuff like that even a lot of the musicians that i follow you know so it's it's really it's really an exciting time uh next up i'm adding uh this one because 
both a musician and a MoGraph artist. So, um, and, you know, a uh, friend of ours, uh, uh, Mr. Mouse himself, Mr. Mr. Mouse. Dead Mouse, Mr. Mouse, um, uh, Dead, uh, uh, Dead, Dead Mouse, Mouse 5. Drop. Dead Mouse 5. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> where's the drop? Where's the drop? Um, Your um, cousin Skrillex uh, would have dropped by now. Um, uh, Dead Mouse and OG Slick are doing a drop on Tuesday. That's uh, three nine. So uh, super excited about this one. This one will be fun. Um, next up on the tenth, um, these are these are they're they're more traditional artists. You know, uh, uh, first one up, we've got Killer Acid. I really liked uh, this one. They said something really. He, he he does a lot of these comics and stuff. Did like you that. give me he, Killer I don't, Acid? I don't know whether is this it. A, or is this just a still? Is that why I don't? It have is it? just a still. Yes. Oh, okay. This is just like I didn't see. Oh, I didn't have go. an example. You yes. know what's nice is a lot of the people who are doing drops on Nifty are actually showing off some of their videos, like they're doing like a teaser trailer or whatever. I'm assuming yeah. Nifty is like saying, "Hey, you should do a teaser trailer." Yeah. You know, yeah. Because a lot of them are looking uh, very similar. But uh, uh, I didn't see one, so I just downloaded a couple of their images and stuff. I thought Killer Acid, this one about NFTs, was really funny. Um, hello, I'm an expert on digital artwork because I read an article on the internet yesterday. So I, I just think that's funny because there's so much, you know, talk about about like oh how much energy it's taking you know oh no this is how much energy no it's right. not taking any energy and it's like okay just because you read one article online doesn't mean i i, I don't know i i don't know i'm not an expert on it you know but i don't think we have all, all the information i thought that was funny anyway and it, uh, they also did a uh, really good um uh, twin peaks comics which i thought were good yeah non-fungible means they're not interchangeable blah, 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 blah. anyway so a lot of these little comics. Uh, the next one is uh, Meat Canyon, and this is uh, uh, Meat, March tenth, by the way. Meat Canyon. Meat Canyon. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's got this very like Adult Swim esque like look and stuff like that. Uh, now uh, I don't super... have a Meat Canyon. Where did, where's oh, that? Oh, did I not put it in there? No. Um, maybe I didn't put it in there. I'll look on the uh, interwebs for it. Yeah, Meat Canyon. Okay, so Meat Canyon. Uh, there's actually a uh, uh, a TV or, or like a YouTube cartoon um, called Monster Lab, and uh, Meat Canyon does the animation for it. It's really cool. It's very you know Adult Swim esque uh, looking. It's very very cool. So I think it's 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 is yeah. this hey. the guy who does Super Bad? It looks like, kind of like Super Bad type look, but I'm not sure. I don't know. All right, I'm sorry, not super bad. I'm at super jail. I have super I jail. Don't, I don't know. Is this the no guy? Idea. Yeah, either that. The, pro the or problem with like a lot of this stuff is I look at them and I'm like, okay, so I'm 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 going to go through and I'm going to judge the ones just from like either not knowing the artist at all. So I'm probably like the worst person to say, hey, go and buy this one or hey, go and buy this one. This is just the notable ones that I looked right. at whenever I'm looking. So don't don't judge me because <laughs> I didn't pick the best artist or whatever, you know, because I have made quite a few assumptions on which art I think is going to sell really well. And I have been very wrong <laughs> on many occasions, you know, so we'll get to you rate zero. Don't you worry. Oh yeah, we're on the we're on the drops. Oh yeah, you know we're not to our friends yet. Um, so Meat Canyon, that was those ones. Are, uh, Meat Canyon and Killer Acid are on uh, March tenth, March eleventh. Um, uh, Alexis Christodoulou. I'm 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 sure. Is I it Alexis or watched. Alex? Al Al Alex. I have Alex listed here. It's A L E X I S. Okay. Alexis, the, I believe the folder the folder just said Alex. That's why I'm just double well, checking my name have, right. Uh, that up. Let me see. And you may have just not put the rest of the. the no, universe. Alexis. Okay. Al Alexis. You just didn't Alexis. put the is on it. I, I get, I get you. Dulu. Right. Um, these are some really pretty, like little uh, nature loops and stuff like that. Like you know, abstract nature loops and uh, a very, very pretty stuff. Um, I I felt like this was uh, this was very within the three D MoGraph world and stuff like that. Uh, it's super pretty stuff. Uh, next one of note, John Guido. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct, but really killer illustrator um, has done a ton of stuff for Marvel and uh, Lucas Films. Um, I, I think there's some DC stuff, 
but uh, uh, I'm very I'm excited about this one. Like I I I missed out on Boss Logic um, the last time Boss Logic did a drop on Nifty, and I was I like I I literally had. I, I, I was worried that I was becoming addicted to NFTs. No. So I handed off my phone to my wife because I was like, I, I don't know whether this will resell well or anything. So just take my phone so that I don't just spend a thousand dollars on this piece. And man, I wish I had because those are going for like eight grand now. <laughs> did the so, artist you just show, did uh, did he get licensing rights for if he's doing like Marvel or DC stuff? I have like no Boss idea. Logic See, that's a good conversation. We should save this for later because this was a big conversation in the NFT space this week as far as licensing and rights and like what's fair use and what's not because there's a lot of that going on, you know? Let's uh let's come back to that. I'll I'm gonna add a note in here to go should, back. Should to, I show uh, should I show the thing. boss logic right now or wait then? No, just wait for uh wait because okay. um uh that's it for the the drops on Nifty. There's a couple other ones if y'all want to go check it out. Uh, you can check out uh Nifty's. They don't they don't they don't have a tendency to update their website. Great. I I hate the way their website laid out. Their marketplace is fantastic. But it shows uh, the drops as like mobile. a JPEG. Mobile sucks. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's like just go on to their their Twitter. Um, it's at Nifty Gateway, and they'll be they'll they'll you'll have a whole list of whoever they do, which is great because they do it first thing Monday morning, so you can see. The one thing that sucks is the one thing sucks about all these drops is never knowing the price beforehand. You know, so like, and and that's a problem. Like I I think in this space right now is I never as a collector I never know how much to budget for each of these drops. You know, mm -hmm. like which ones I should be going for and which ones I I, I won't be able to afford. You know. Another another conversation for after this. So, can, can I just um, mention, by the way, I just did get absolutely. a text from from Matthias, who is taking his vacation in Hawaii. He just wanted to say hi with this beautiful photo <laughs> of him shirtless in, in the forest. Oh, I did get permission Killing to show it. that. <laughs> good. Yes. <laughs> oh, so good man. <laughs> anyway. Love myself a good Matthias. Shirtless Matthias. Shirtless. Like yeah, all our Skype Matthias. meetings. Like all our <laughs> Skype meetings. Yeah. Oh, man. I think you should do there. the motion show like that. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Matthias Omatoma. We definitely get more viewers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> May not be the MoGraph crowd that we're right. looking no, for. No, definitely Definitely wouldn't. get more viewers. Um, okay, next up, uh, Maker's Place. Uh, there's a couple of uh, good drops this week. Uh, uh, first one uh, is tomorrow, 3 9, March 9th, um, Lucas Zanotto. Uh, uh, it's a lot of these like super satisfying loops, you know, I really enjoy the, the loops and, uh, they're oh, using primitives, these. you know, in order to make like, look like faces and stuff like that. It's really cool stuff, you know, uh, uh, very MoGraphy, you know, it's got that MoGraphy look. Right. Um, next up, here we go. Boss Logic is doing a drop on Maker's Place. So I am, I, I'm super excited. Here's my chance to, to get in. Uh, Boss Logic did really well on Nifty, you know, and, a really well-known artist uh, in in this space. So I would say, uh, if you're looking for a good drop, I, if I was if I was to bet on one person this week, it would probably be this one. You know, because I feel like I feel like that's a it's a good investment. It's good art. You know, Boss Logic is really well known, and uh, yeah, that like fair. such good stuff. And Richard says that we so. should make that uh, topless. Matthias and NFT. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I feel like here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like I, I, there, I've had so many ideas for like, like shitty NFTs. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's like let's let's do this as an NFT. Right. It's like, and so you almost have to like create a second space to sell crap NFTs because this is your brand. You know. You you gotta you gotta be worried about like the <laughs> NFTs that you're putting out because you know every single one that as an artist you're putting out it says something about you you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. yeah I don't know yeah so if you're just yeah. putting out you know poop NFTs poop. people yeah. are gonna know you as as the poop NFT artist you know versus y'all y'all keep talking about that while I use the restroom hold All on right, I'll be right back. <laughs> poop. Let's, we're talking about poop. Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> Got to go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it for the uh, the Nifty and the Maker's Place drops. Um, 
if y'all so we're gonna jump over to our friends like the friends and uh, uh noted mograph artists that uh we've been following and that we enjoy um who are doing drops this week um uh i do want to say i do want to preface this and say if you're an artist and you're doing a drop this week hit us up because uh either follow me on twitter uh at matt milstead and uh, let me know that you're doing a drop, you know, because we want we want to be able to encourage and uplift this MoGraph community and help y'all make money. Because to me, that's the most important. That's the thing that uh, 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 Dave and I have always believed uh, uh, from the very beginning about MoGraph.com is we want to help educate and uplift and uh, uh, and inspire other new artists in order to do this. And if we can help, you know, put another artist on a, a pedestal, you know, for a little bit, that would be fantastic. And we we love that, you know. Um uh, like, for example, last week, I don't know if this had anything to do with us or whatever, but uh, last week, um, Abby Basilla, uh, who we mentioned on the show for her drop, um, she dropped uh, like three pieces last week, and one of her pieces ended up going for 30 Ethereum. No, that had nothing to do with us. There there were some great people in our, but in our clique of friends. If any way that friends. we can help support artists, you know, in this space, you know, uh, then, uh, yeah, we would love to, besides uh, outside of giving a foundation invite. I'm sorry. Like, we just, I, I everyone hitting me up on Instagram and facebook and or uh twitter sorry i don't i don't have one i i have i have none that's the problem it's so hard to get now my my suggestion right now honestly and i have this in the notes as well there's a note in the in the show notes to one of these new spaces is to try and get onto these these new spaces as quick as you can if that's if that's an issue because it doesn't mean you have to post anything right away just get in there and if one of them is starting to blow up then you've got your invite yeah, you know? you're in. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know you say that too. It's like, hey, man, like, you never know. Like, it just takes one company to like do something slightly different or make an adjustment or get like, I mean, Maker's Place. I'll be honest. Like, I was, it wasn't on my radar at all as like a top three mm-hmm. place until Beeple's Christie's thing, and they, I guess, they yeah. managed to do that together. I'd love to know too if they like if they paid him to do it through them or like That's how that worked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, who knows? I could just be like, kind of talking out of my ass right now. But like, right. I was thinking, I'm like, hmm, there's like a lot of hype going on right there. And like, why did he like switch? Like, did did like the smart business move would have been like if he offered, like if he let them all bid on it, like who could pay him more to get that drop? Because he's right. brought so much attention to Maker's yeah. Place. Um, and so like, if you're on on Maker's Place <laughs> and, and you're like, I'm and how dying. unstable they are, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Well, you know what? I'm not even gonna knock them. I, I feel like they I all. They all That's have gotta like, be no one own. would have been able to handle that people drop. No, I, I, I don't yeah, care yeah. what site you are. No one would have been able to do that. So. And they've all had glitches. I just, like, they've yeah. all had glitches, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. there. And so yeah. it's like, whatever. But um, yeah, what were you saying? Yeah. So yeah, I forget now. What were you talking about? I don't know. Oh, just yeah. like the different sites and stuff like that. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Just get on one. Get on one. So, you don't know yeah. where, where it's going to ex- launch to. Right. Yeah. 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 Or if you're really hard up for one, go on foundation. Find the cheapest one you can find. It's uh, the ch- the cheapest one you'll find is 0.1 Ethereum. I know this because I'll talk about this in a little bit. But uh, uh, the cheapest one you'll find is 0.1 Ethereum. You can buy it, and I believe you'll get a foundation invite. You know, oh, I think really? you you. Is, is I think so. I think you get foundation invites by both buying or selling. Yeah, I do so know I that they're making changes there. to some of these things because, like, be. right now, I think if you make a sale, you used to get like five or ten invites and now you get like two or something yeah. i don't really understand yeah. it but everybody's backed so. up that's the thing even if you're yeah. an amazing artist right now you're not going to get on nifty for a while they're like solid booked right they're like yeah, yeah. totally for the rest of the year at least is what i hear yeah nifty i i feel like i feel like nifty you got to know someone you know you got to know someone who knows someone who can get you into nifty yeah. i don't know how did that work how did that work for you brodor I didn't know anybody. I didn't. Here's my. Did here's you my apply? Thing. I applied, but mm. uh, no one got back to me on that. I remember, like, really early on that 
you know, like my wife is like, like your, your friends are on them. Just like write your friends. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. I just right. can't. Yeah. I'd rather just for like for, and that's just a me thing. So it's not a knock about anyone else. I'm like, I just can't like do that. I, I don't know. I, it's not my style. No, I understand so I that. Like, you don't want to be that guy. You don't be like, hey, Mike Winkleman, can you th- think you can hook me up? Yeah. Mm-hmm, nifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, whatever, man. Like it, it will come for me. And like, I'll just like sit and be patient and have FOMO for a while. But like, you just got to be patient. Um, no, I just like, I, I was relentless. At one point, I just got in my head that Nifty was the only one that I wanted to be on. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I just didn't focus on any of the other ones. But like, that's kind of how I kind of target and do most everything is that like, once like I'm like determined, it was just like, I mean, I, 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 I've i got a second drop coming up, too, even before the first one has come. And I've been working on that since 2017. Jeez. And it's just like, and it's an insane, like, message chain. It was just like, I want this to happen. Like, what do we got to do to make this happen? Um and then finally it does. So it's like, I don't know, just be persistent and be patient with what you want. And like, it'll all come together. But yeah, mine yeah. was just like, I was just cold emailing them. My biggest thing and recommendation to get on some of these big sites that you want to be on um, is build a plan. You know how many good artists are out there? Just being a good artist or a recognized artist is not good enough anymore. It might have been back in September, but it, yeah. it, like not now. It might have been in, you know, um, mm-hmm. even even earlier. December. Not, I mean, I don't even think though. I, I think it was all, all gone by that time of yeah. just being a good. Artist. It's like who doesn't want to be on them? And so you have to like almost pitch and sell yourself like you would be for a client job. It's like yeah. like build like get, do something cool, build something that's unique, and put it and present it and like and hit them with it, you know, and just yeah. do it over over again and and show them that you've got something that's really unique and worth it so just being like hey i've got you know a hundred thousand followers or i've got you know i've worked with all these companies who cares man like everybody like all people on there have they don't really care anymore they've got celebrities knocking down their doors to get in and they're turning they're turning them down too um yeah because you got the tj millers who are using copyrighted stuff from their own movies to create nfts back one um but mm. i mean i know for a fact that they're they're turning a lot of celebrity clientele down because it's like no this does not make sense like you you have to bring something to the space you know yeah and so hold something put a whole thing together and like you got to sell yourself yeah and that, that's what i did that's that's how i eventually got in i was told no uh probably eight times that they're not taking anybody on. And I just was like, I just didn't accept it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> I was like, I was like, my thought was like, and I've shared this. I feel like I have the opposite of imposter syndrome. I remember this at Camp Bograph and I felt kind of weird and slightly bad about it. Um, Ryan Summers was up and he was like, um, how many people here have, or, or feel imposter syndrome and raise your hand. And, Everyone raised their hands yeah. except for two people. And it was me, and I look over, and Barton's hand wasn't raised either. And I'm yeah. like, and I'm thinking, I'm like, should I have raised my hand? Do I look kind of like a jerk for not raising my <laughs> do, hand? Do I have imposter syndrome about not waving, raising my hand about having imposter <laughs> syndrome? You're like imposter syndrome about not having it. Um, and I was like, no, I have the opposite of imposter syndrome. And I wish a lot of other artists could maybe take this on, and, and maybe I could do a better job at maybe splitting both. But I have... Like if something doesn't go my way, typically it's it's like never because of me. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, so like my posts on Instagram are doing really poor, and I'm like, well, it's in Instagram's algorithm. It's not me. I'm not a bad artist. You know, obviously Instagram screwed something up. It's like, <laughs> am I the problem? Am I, am I no. Wrong? It's no, it's no, Instagram. No. It's wrong. Who are wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not it's not it's not like cocky or conceited. So I don't want it to come across that way. It's more just like. Everyone instantly wants to be like, oh, the producer didn't write me back. They must not like my work. It's like, no, they just got busy, you know? And right. I try to tell students that all the time. They're like, I, I sent something to it for an internship and they didn't respond. I'm like, yeah, but you gotta figure they probably got like a hundred internship requests this month and they're just like busy. They're, it's not that they think your artwork's bad. And it's like, that's what I like try to instill in young artists. But like, that's what I have in myself. It's like, you're not, oh, like, it's not always you. A majority of the time, it's not you at all. Mm-hmm. And so when Nifty, or super rare where they didn't write back 
or they were like, no, sorry, we're not taking. I was like, okay, obviously I'm not explaining myself well enough because they, <laughs> no, they would, you're not hearing me. <laughs> no, you, you, you know who I am. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like, okay, so I'm not doing a good job at verbalizing what I want to do. So I got to put it together and put it uh, and formulate the words and put it together in a pitch and really present it because like, yeah. I think this is a really dope idea. And it's like, if they didn't accept me that week, then I just did the next week and the next yeah. week and the next month. And, and like, eventually it all like worked out and it's going to do that for everybody. It's in their best interest to get as many artists on these platforms yeah. as possible. Yeah. You know, that's like a, the part and everyone's like, they have small teams, you know, they're absolutely flooded. They're trying to hire more people on, but they have small teams. So there's only so much they, they can do within that certain kind of period. It's just of time. impossible to deal with a flooding like that. Even, even when it comes down to, for example, the uh, get nifty discord, which has, has been temporarily closed just to make sure that it's not getting swamped it's like now it's the same problem right like people want to get into that discord and they're like oh, i really want to join that discord and hang out right and it's like well if there are two thousand people in here all of a sudden how is it going to progress the way that it needs to progress because with what rev the revs are doing right now and everything it's trying to keep this community of people where they need to go in the NFT space. It's to help it's yeah. to help them. And then all of a sudden you flood it with a bunch of people you don't know who they are, or they came from, are they yeah. collectors, are they not? Are they yeah. trolling? Who knows? It's just not gonna are work. Are they just looking for a foundation invite? Right. So so <laughs> now it's it's that dilemma of now now even the people who are trying to organize the little groups are having problems with that as well. It's it's yeah. It's a it has to be trickled in somehow, but it will get there. Yeah. This, I mean, it's just like Gmail accounts back in the day. Not everybody mm -hmm. could get a Gmail account. You had to have a special yeah. invite, but now everybody's remember, on it. Remember Google Wave? Google Wave. How See, cool. I would love yeah, to be on okay. Super Rare and all of that stuff, but it's right. just not going to happen right now. Yeah. I'm not even going to try. We've, we've applied. Here, here's the thing. Like, there's, there's a rush right now, and I've even noticed this in three weeks. That, uh, like, the the you know the 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 news cycle is always what two weeks mm -hmm. they say 15 days or something yeah we're on week three of i think like the huge big rush like everyone was getting on and stuff like that and so we're on week three and i've seen like a significant drop in the amount of nft artists who are making drops because everyone's it's it a lot of people are seeing this as a cash grab you know mm -hmm. and for a bunch of artists a bunch of very well-known and good artists, you know, it is. It is absolutely a cash grab right. because you are finally getting a chance to put known work out there or, like, meme work or work that, like, people know anyone outside of the space know, you know, you're able to put that work out there and sell it, you know. But then there's the the, the little guys, right, like me, for example, you know, or or I, I I would say Dave, but Dave puts way more work out than I do, right? Not that much. But I mean, but my still, whole thirty like followers the, the, on Twitter. The little guys have. who who <laughs> have thirty or a hundred, or me, I've only got four hundred followers on Twitter, and not to mention the whole space is in Twitter now, and it's not on Instagram, where almost everyone's been focusing for the past. That's the thing. How I didn't even years? use my account you know? on Twitter until yeah, just last exactly. week. Yeah. So, like, you've got the little guys who are like, oh, yeah, I want this cash grab. So I'm going to, you know, pull up some of my work and I'm going to post it. And mm -hmm. then we all get super depressed when we realize that we are not the best in our industry, you know, because, you know, we don't have the following or we don't have the people who are doing this, you know, and, and so on and so on. So, like, uh, sorry, we were we were on friends. We're jumping over to something different. We'll get back to our friends, but I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this since I'm on the subject. So this past week I was in a real bad headspace, mm -hmm. a real bad headspace. And I feel like a lot of artists are going through this as well. You, you, you see this as like a cash grab. This is a chance to make a bunch of money. This is a chance to not have to do client work anymore. Wouldn't that be great if we all never had to do client work? And I think eventually it's going to it's going to get to the point where we can all start like easily posting work, you know, on a site for people to to buy. But as of right now, it's like people are trying to fill out the space and stuff. And so I was super depressed. I was I, I would and you know, I I love Ariev, 
Aryev is one of my best friends, but it's like it is so depressing to see him make <laughs> so much money and like me not make any money. <laughs> But you, you also know? don't have a giant and following, so that's I don't the have a giant following. That's the thing. And so I realized that. It's like I, I, I haven't been this Twitter person. I haven't been this this Instagram famous person. People know me not from my art. People know me from this podcast. Of course. We have a lot of listeners on the podcast. A lot of people would probably recognize my voice way before they would recognize my art. You know? Right. And so I, I realized I had like four pieces on uh, on different marketplaces. And I was like, you know what? I got to stop. I, I got to get some sleep. I, I am I am mm -hmm. tired of losing sleep over the the Schrodinger's crypto art. Right. Where mm -hmm. you don't know whether you're going to wake up the next morning and be a millionaire. You know, it's like I need to stop that mentality. I need what I need to do is I need to focus back on the art because while yes, this this stuff has been awesome for artists and making money, it's also been huge for creativity. I don't know if all the rest of y'all have felt this way, but thinking about what the next thing that I could post or the next thing that I could mint or the next thing that I could create has just been a it's it's been a a creative like just just splurge of ideas in my mind, you know. And I feel like that's where I need to be focusing on. I need to stop focusing on the money. And I think a lot of artists need to do this as well. You know? Oh my gosh. Dude, I, I think that that's thing. I think that's fantastic advice. Speaking so of FOMO, fuck, fuck render's piece on foundation right now is hundred and fifty five yeah. ETH. Oh my god. I mean right. But that right, was but with he, post Malone, right? That's is that his post Malone piece? You have to understand you can look at that and you can be like, I've met I I've met frederick duquette i know him like <laughs> we've hung out we've I had him on him. the podcast why is he making 155 thousand or 155 ether and i'm not making anything i could get upset because he has an audience but i could also see that he has this audience he has been focused on nfts meanwhile i have been doing client work and i've been focusing on mograph.com and i've been working on building this fan base right you know other people will be upset. Well, oh, why don't I have that many listeners on my podcast? Right. Because we've been doing this for five years. I haven't been right. doing NFTs for five years. So I had this idea. I had this idea, and I'm like, I'm I'm gonna run with this because I I I want to I want people to I want people to be able to collect my art. You know, for those who want my art. You know, who want to, it's not even about supporting me. It's just who want to collect, you know, because I'm a collector as well. I want to be able to collect a David Aryev, but I can't afford that. I want to be able to collect a fuck render, but I can't afford that, you know? And and so for those who want to collect, I, I priced all my stuff. I lowered the price, everything to the minimum that I could. So I posted my one piece on foundation for 0.1 ether. You know, I changed that and I, 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 I didn't know how much the minimum you could do. And I thought foundation was messed up. So I burned an entire one and then reminted it and okay. found out, okay, that's the lowest I can go. That sucks. So I wasted a bunch of money, but it's okay. You know, because I just want to get the art out there. I want people who, you know, who know me and who want to collect my art as a friend or whatever to be able to buy it. So I put all my stuff on Rarible. Everything's a dollar. All you mm -hmm. have to pay is the minting fees. And yeah. the minting fees are a whole nother thing. Like yeah. it's it's you you like I I feel like this is a good way for me to work. Everyone may work differently, but you know what? I had to get out of that space. I had to be able to sleep at night. I was going absolutely crazy about NFTs, but it's like, no, I need to focus on the art. This is this is such a great time to be able to one get your name out there with collectors, you know? Because there's let's, more let's collectors face it. coming like, in the space. There's more collectors coming oh. in the space, you know? And like unless you have hundreds of thousands of dollars, you're not going to be able to buy a lot of your friends' work, you know? Or you're not going to be able to afford a lot of this stuff. A lot of the stuff even on Nifty right now, I'm getting priced out. You know, I want to collect my friend's work, but I can't because it's too expensive for me. Mm -hmm. I can't tell my wife every week, oh, I just spent three thousand right. dollars every on, yeah, you know, every week. Oh, I yeah. I just spent my entire salary, you know, my entirely <laughs> sal in salary on NFTs. I hope they do well, you know? Yeah. And it's like I've noticed 
this I, I've noticed that some of these lower priced ones, like for example, the Stuzors, you know, the Stuzors, those three two hundred dollar ones that I bought, man, they did really well. I sold I I, I made thirty five hundred dollars from the six hundred dollar in, investment, you know? And I'm curious if like the lower price drives more traffic, gets more stuff. It 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 uh it goes back to a, a thing that Domino's did, right? I was working at Domino's at the time and they had these three for fives. I'm sorry, there's so much chat going on. Everybody is jonesing for the, the information, I'm, the big announcement. I'm, That's the thing. Yeah, I'm in a zone right now. You're, I'm in, sorry. Yeah, you're in the in the talk that was this is my drop scheduled zone, so, for you know, the end of this part. Right. But yeah, yeah, no, this is great. Yeah, keep vibing, so, Matt. The 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 uh uh so there's there's a certain thing that Domino's did when we were working at Domino's. You know, it was like they had this three for uh, a three for fifteen. It was three medium pizzas, one topping for fifteen dollars. So each each pizza was five bucks, right? And every time this happened, we would get slammed. It would be the best we would ever do even though the food cost was so high you know for these three pizzas you'd still do so much volume that you'd end up making a huge profit mm -hmm. you know and i'm curious if some of the 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 nifty drops and the other drops are so expensive that you're pricing out some of the small collectors like me you know who would really love to own our friends work but can't tell my wife that I spent three thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars on one piece of art in the hopes, you know, in one just to support my friends, you know, or two in the hopes that it will increase in value, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's that's I, the hard I, thing. I think there's two things to look at, right? The first one being like what that artist values their price at. So they might be like, I'm not going to start selling my work at this price because I value it higher. So I, I never want to have a piece at low. But at the same time, the other part to think about is that like, who are you actually selling it to? Are you selling it to like the art collectors that have been in the crypto space for years? Or are you selling it to like the artists that want to collect your work too? And I think the answer is both. Right. I think yeah. like this is the this is the space. This space is what we make of it. And if artists want to buy other artists stuff, which is super dope and like, mm -hmm. hell yes, of course. Well, then you can't have everything make it so it's impossible for any artist to ever buy a piece because then yeah. you're not you're not paying attention to the artist and what's actually going to make this space. If you want this space to be sustainable for a long period of time. And obviously artists like are the coolest, dopest people and like lifting each other up constantly. Well, then you can't kick them out, you know, from yeah. being able to collect yeah. your piece and also like be able to hold like how awesome is it to like have one of your friends pieces and seeing it's like it, it's worth right. way more money now. And it's like, dude, that was awesome. Like I invested in you and now like I've got a I've got one of your pieces mm -hmm. and it's got a really high value to it. And this is like awesome. It's like it's even yeah. more of a friendship bond. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's an absolutely awesome point. To and it's that like, investment I, in I, each I, other that's really helping. You know, that's yes. why Ab okay. uh, Abby did so well 100%. this week. Everybody was talking her. Uh, and that's the reason that you can't do a group and have like 2000 people come into a group. You can't talk that many people up in a group and help each other out. It, it has to start small and, and grow. Yeah. And the other thing about, and about uh, the REFs too, is I just like to mention like the clubhouses they've been doing are great. And especially this last week, the one dealing with like the FOMO, the mental health stuff, it's, it's really bad for, for everybody right now. And this is. feeling that feeling that and, and like, they're doing a really great job doing that. So, so major shout out yeah. on that. So you don't get that FOMO quite as bad when fuck render drops his deal for like 300 yeah. K. I thought it was funny though that, and I, I commented, he, he posted the collab with uh, post Malone and it was mm -hmm. post Malone's post that posted it, but there was no mm -hmm. audio on it because Facebook muted his audio for oh, copyright that's violation. Funny. That's really funny. Probably got to work so that out somehow. So, uh, so <laughs> bottom line is, you know, I, I'm not going to, I, 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 the people who follow me or who follow us, you know, are probably artists. I may, I, I don't think I have any collectors. Well, I did sell my one piece on foundation, a uh, uh, big shout out to Alex Ness and Jeff Burns, who were the initial artists who, you know, bid on it. And that caused two more collectors to come in and actually, <laughs> you know, bid more, which was great. It, 
the, selling your first piece is is fantastic, you know. And I I didn't make any money because you know gas fees are so effing expensive, right? You know, but you know what? It it felt good to get the work out there, and it's now in the hands of a collector, you know, not just my friends, which is cool, you know. And so that's the thing with I did with the, that I did with the rareable stuff. It's like I I just priced everything for a dollar, and I hit up every. I want you to know I hit up every single one of my friends who had bought one, and I said, "This is what I'm going to do. If you want your money back, I will give you your money back." You know, and all of them were like, "No, I'm investing in you," which is awesome. Yeah. You know, here's the thing, uh, like it, it it the the gas prices suck. You know. But if you want one of my rareable pieces, they're all a dollar. You just have to pay, pay, pay the gas price. Just wait until it's low, you know, and then pick one up. You know, mm-hmm. I just I just want people to be able to collect whatever they want to collect. All right. Um, that's yeah. All right. Anyway, everybody's waiting. Yes. Everybody's waiting for the announcement. Okay. We, Let's get to this. I know. I, oh, okay. <laughs> well, we've got we've got we got friends drops who we want to talk about. So do we want to talk no, about Brodeur first? Brodeur is first. On okay, the, it's, it's Brodeur. All, yes. And then uh, we're going to hit up our friends drop, so uh, yeah. make sure and stick around. Brodeur, let's hear it. You're doing a drop on the 15th. Let's hear what Here it's it about. It's on Nifty Gateway. In in two weeks from now, you're going to be a millionaire. <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope. I hope. Let, I hope. Let, <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. I mean, that's cool. If that comes that way, that obviously yeah. that's fantastic. Um, I will say this, like, since I've gotten into the industry, I think probably about a year or two after I got into the industry, all I wanted to do was make personal work. And so outside of work, lunch breaks, after work, I would just make personal work and I would put it on like Behance. This is like before Instagram or anything like that. And it was really just, mostly it was like, if I wasn't getting a specific client job, that's what I wanted my focus to be on. Like, I was like, okay, we can't get these client jobs, so I'll do a personal project that's kind of like that. It's been like my passion and my driving force the almost entire time of me being in in this industry. Um, so after I left the studio, I uh, became locked in loading, and I was like, okay, I I have to like establish myself outside of just being a creative director at a studio. And like, I want to like make a name for all the personal work that I, that I do and like really kind of push it out there. And so that's really just been like my thing, you know, and it's just been out of the, the, the sheer love of doing it and wanting to learn and grow. And along those ways, I've noticed that I get more client work because of my personal work along those ways. I see, you know, people like Diplo licensing my work that just sitting there and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And then I see like companies like Adobe and, and other software companies that are like, hey, would you do tutorials for us? We saw this personal piece. You just make whatever you want, but like, you know, record it, use our software. It's like, of course. So it's like, that's kind of how we've like, like a lot of the artists that have been doing these creative things have been kind of going about it, but it's always been for the love. Like I've never stopped because I do it so I can learn and grow. And that's the only way I can get my creative energy out. I Mm -hmm. can't get it out on client projects. I just can't do it. And I, it bottles up and I'm like, I've got to make some personal work. Like I can't stand this anymore. Um, and so that's what it's always been about. So I've been doing locked and loading now, and that's been like my whole career of like being on my own. So I've got my drop on the 15th on Nifty Gateway, and it's called the first and the last. And it's because it's going to be the first time, obviously, you can ever buy my work on the NFT space as locked and loading. And guess what? It's going to be the last time you can ever buy my stuff on an NFT space, uh, space as locked and loading. That's because once my auctions end, I'm scrapping my name. I'm no longer going to be known as locked and loading. I'm changing it back to what my original art name was when I first got into the, the direction that I was going to do this for a living. And that's Brilly, B-R-I-L-L-Y. And then the drop will also have the first piece ever created as me now known as the artist Brilly. Nice. So it's going to be like the next, it's the, it's a phase in my artistic career. Like I feel like it's bringing it back to my authentic original mm-hmm. self of who like I mm-hmm. really am. Um, and so in high school I was snowboarding 
and I broke my collarbone. And at that point in high school, all I wanted to do was go to college and play sports. Like that was my plan. That was literally my plan. I just wanted to play sports in college. And then after that, I broke my collarbone. I was watching Discovery Channel, and there's an artist named Michael Valley, and he was doing airbrushing on like cars and things like that. I thought it was super dope. Mm -hmm. And I went and got an airbrush, and I went down my basement, and we had like scrap pieces of drywall down there. And I was airbrushing. I was in a, I had my broken collarbone, so my arm was all like slinged up in a harness, and like I couldn't play any sports during that. It was like three months, so I'm airbrushing. I'm not telling anybody. And then I guess my parents saw it and they're like, are you painting that? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you've got to like show people. And then I started showing like art teachers and stuff like that. And like, you have to go to college for this. And I was like, really? And they're like, oh, you have to, you absolutely have to. And so I was like, getting Those into parents are pushing their kids to be doctors and lawyers. You're like, no, you got to be an artist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And well, so, yeah, right. I know it's really awesome to have that kind of support. And so I started doing some graffiti and stuff too. And so me and my friend were like trying to come up with what our tag would be. And I was never like a, a big like wall mural graffiti artist. I was just, a, I was a tagger. And uh, that was like really my, my kind of thing. And, um, and we we're coming up with what our tag should be. And so that's Brilly. That's how Brilly came about. Brilly is really a mixture between Brodor and Philly. That's mm -hmm. it. And I was yeah. like, dude, that sounds, it's like weird. But like I like it, I, and so like so I would just tag it everywhere. Really, if you actually go back and look at my locked and loading work as early back as you can go, where I started like writing stuff in there, you'll see "brilly" is written all over my work. So if you go to like the one, it's like a dumpster and it's got like an octopus kind of like hanging out. Mm -hmm. Read the dumpster, read the back of the walls, read all, and you'll see "brilly" everywhere. So it's like nice. it's been me, it's always been me, and I feel like I'm going back to the authentic me with it. So the drop. Yeah. The first and the last drop will be the first and last time you can ever get something that's locked and loading on the NFT space. So I'm not going to be pimping this stuff out for the next decade. It's like right. this is it. It ends up being two, just under 2% of my total body of work that I've done is locked and loading for personal work will be for sale. That is it. Period. End of story. I'm not doing this thing where 10 years from now it's going to be like, oh, here's my first piece I ever did is locked. No, mm -hmm. that's it. That's it. I've In the made vault. my selections. I've picked my favorite stuff yeah. uh, that means everything to me for one mm -hmm. reason or another. And that's what I want to give to everybody else and then be like, that's it. From now on, mm -hmm. it's going to be all it's all it's all new and I'm and I'm moving forward. So that'll be the first piece. Now, the first piece is kind of dope. It's going to be a blind auction. No one gets to see what the piece is. Oh, so okay. you're going to be bidding. Mm -hmm. You're going to be bidding on either just like a blank image. And once the auction closes, the highest bidder, then it reveals for everyone what that piece is. Okay. Um, so there's like a lot of little fun twists. It's going to actually have 16 Man, pieces that's total. That's going to make you nervous, dude. Like not to, not to put the pressure on you, but that's, that's yeah. like, that's nerve wracking. You know, you're, dude, you're, here, here, here's first the piece going out. Here's no, no. I mean, I, I feel like. I'm like, I love it. I love the piece, you yeah. know? So it's like, that's good. That's good. This, that's this that's is, real good. Yeah. Well, this is what I want to share with everyone too. I've never created to, for, to like care about likes and followers. I create always because it's what I want to create. If you remember at the beginning, mm -hmm. I was like, I have this creative energy and I just have to get it out. I don't think about that. So, um, if people are like, they don't like it, it's like, well, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't make it for you to begin with. You know, so it's like I, I made it for me. If it resonates with you, that's fantastic. That's like every artist's dream that their piece resonates with other people. Very cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going out of my way to try to make something because I think someone else is going to like right. it. Right, 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 right. And, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm cool. You know, I'm cool with it. I think, I think it's dope. Yeah, you don't have um, imposter syndrome. You know, so you're <laughs> good. <laughs> but but I'm very introverted, you know, but no, the imposter syndrome, just because I'm not, I, I try not to focus on what I think other people think as much, you know, uh, and it's just like, it, it has to come from, from you and within. And so, yeah, my piece, I'm trying to make it. So I think about price points for everyone. Um, there's been a lot of people who have helped me with this drop as well. And, uh, and I'm definitely going to be looking out for them. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and I'm trying to do price points. So everyone has a chance of getting my piece at various price options. Uh, you know, while at the same time respecting how much I think my work should go for, um, right. because I, I want to be inclusive to, to everyone for, for this, for this piece, but I'm like super stoked. I'm not going to be revealing what pieces I'm dropping yet, but there mm -hmm. are, 16 pieces in total 
Um, there's going to be editions, single editions, um, uh, the, obviously the, the blind auction, um, and limited editions. And they're going to be doing any drawings. Yes. Nice. Okay. There'll nice. be drawings. How many? Two. Two. Okay. Two. Nice. Two at, a, at a dollar price point. Brilliant. At a shilling. dollar price point. Oh. Damn, you know, Daniel. I and and I look at them as like somewhat signature pieces as well. Like I also want to give people that like get my work the ability to like grab something and say this is now like instantly really valuable right you know yeah. like I yeah just want to like, out price everything it's like i also want to hook people up you know and yeah. like and in return like that that helps me out as well so um so yeah so i was like no freaking put it up for a dollar now the quantity is not that high it's not like 100 uh right but there's there's multiples there's two of them and so you know i i hope i i hope my friends get them you know that yeah. that's kind of yeah kind of the idea obviously i can't like pick who gets them because that's just kind of cheating but right. <laughs> i'm definitely hoping that it get, even, even if one of my friends gets them it's going to make it feel worth it that i did the dollar right yeah yeah for sure the artist the formerly thing, known as yeah. locked and loaded the artist yeah that's what it'll be yeah. handles yeah. are going to change website branding everything's changed to yeah that's uh, the question the in the chat actually are you you're just changing the name on the accounts it's not like you're going to have a new instagram account no, I'm not going to erase the work or change that because it's still me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It, so it's part of my history, and that's what makes the locked and loading, uh, I think, very valuable and and scarce. Is that mm -hmm. it's like this was like a major phase in my art career, and I it's still attached to me. I don't want to disassociate with me as locked and loading. Rather say like this is a part of my history, and and that's it. This is like this is that period of my my life that you mm -hmm. could you you could own and so um yeah that that's pretty much where it's at really for shilly really stuff really it is yeah <laughs> james said that uh the cops mm. are finally gonna figure out who you were because you've been tagging all that stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i have thought yeah. about that um uh, but i'm like that no, they're all i haven't done graffiti and uh, since i was like yeah it'd be really stupid if i got arrested for this <laughs> right We've right. been looking you know, at you for years. We've been trying to track you down. Yeah. Finally got you. I, I stopped. Nah. Like my, in, when I was in college, I pretty much stopped. I was like, okay, <laughs> I can't really get arrested for this stuff. Yeah. That's great. That's badass, dude. Yeah. I'm so excited. I, yeah. I feel I'm, like, I'm and you know, like, and it, it, your, your work is fantastic. And I've been saying this, I've been saying this before I even knew about what your whole drop was. Cause you kind of spilled it to me. You know, <laughs> I've been saying you're one of the artists that I'm going to pick up, you know? Oh, and I think, I, I, I hope you do very, very well, you know, as both as someone who appreciates your art and as your friend, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, totally so, that. I really hope, I really hope you do well. And I think you will. I think you will. You've got, you got, I, you, you've done very good job marketing it. I, I think, yeah. you know, I think, I think that's that, the thing. You got to have that marketability. You got to have yeah. that marketability, you know? And I think this, uh, I think this, I, I really hope this will help push, you know, a lot of, yeah. of uh, this, this drop. It's going to be, this will be, this will be one that people talk about. I think, yeah. you know, well, that's sure. really cool. Like I'm not holding anything back. Like I feel like I'm entering into this space and, that means I'm giving it my all. Like before yeah. I was even on every, any platform and like I, no one accepted me. I was like, I was building I was like, it's going to yeah. happen and I'm going to yeah. be ready. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for this drop, I'm, it's like, I'm not, I'm not like holding on to my favorite pieces for me. It's like, I want right. someone else to have those. So it's that, literally, yeah, I, love, I love that thought, you know, because that, that was the whole thing that I went back with, like giving my stuff away for a dollar. It's like, I, I don't want, I don't, I don't want it to be limited to like, you know, just collectors or someone who can afford I, I want i want my friends to own it you know yep. i yep. want that's it's a piece of me that you know if someone wants it why shouldn't i just be able to just give it to them you know yep yeah um yeah matt do you have a hard out today because we got a lot Ooh. more to go okay good good fine good, good. Okay, i mean good. we're we're okay like I, my checking. kids at my in-laws okay so just wanted to double yeah, check it's, it's spring break all right we're I was a little worried on time okay no we're good uh do you want to do community drops Let's do some community drops, you know, at uh, notable ones for the week, you know. 
I, I wanted um, to mention real quick, because we did talk about Abby, but also I had a note on here, Shams. Congrats to Shams. For Shams, her yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so happy for Shams, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good for her. I mean, it, it, this is, this is uh, Shams is a really good example that, you know, to the, the, the people mentality of just sitting down and doing a daily render every day. You know, she got into this space, man, she's been hustling. She, uh, she hit her one year at the, uh, the, the Denver meetup, right? Was that her of one doing, year? I think that I was her that. one year. Okay. Yeah, one year of doing, you know, if you hit 100 days, people will give you $100, <laughs> just in case for the, those who don't do. <laughs> no. Oh, can That's I, can I share this real quick? Yeah. Yeah, so, sure. Please do. So, so uh, Beeple, uh, he came in to hang with me and my my students uh, last semester. And uh, and so at the end, like I, it was after his first drop before, for his second, no, I, f- I forget if it was before a second or after, uh, but he definitely had one. I think it was after a second, yeah. So he had he had already done that three and a half million one as well, mm-hmm. and we were we were all chilling in there. And then people promised them if they didn't every day for thirty days, they would get on to an MT site and they would make a million dollars as well. And uh, and so then he started calling them Scott's Tots. And, oh my um, gosh, yes. And and then one day I'm like sitting here, I'm like working my, and I see Mike's hitting me up and I look and he's got a picture, a screen grab of his Amazon cart and it's got like 40 laptop batteries in it purchased. And yes, makes did, sense. Did you me. ever see, I, oh, I, I get did you ever see okay. the office? I, you, I, I know the, I know the thing that you're talking about. But I have not finished that. It's the one episode oh, I have never. It seen is all hard the way to watch because it is the most painful episode I have it is. ever. I, I was like, I can't do it's this. Cringe. Gotta step away. I've only yeah. watched oh, it like it twice. It was so funny. Yeah. Though. Yeah. yeah. So so he gets he, he doesn't he can't pay for their college at Michael Scott. And so he tells that's what he tells him. So he's going in. They're like cheering him on. And he, he tells them that like he actually can't do it. And then he's like, but I do have something for everybody. And he's just got like laptop batteries in a bag that he's like gives people <laughs> wow so that's what, that's what he was doing i was like man it was so funny that's perfect that's really funny <clears throat> so uh shams shams yeah. mm. she's been hustling you know she's a perfect example of this space she is a great example of this nft space because she's been hustling she's been getting to know people she's been getting her work out there she's been doing the dailies you know and because of that i mean she made what Almost four, almost four hundred thousand dollars on this this last drop, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. So here's the huge. thing: Sham, Shams is not even a good uh, like for the NFT space. A good projection of the NFT space. She's a really good model for an artist wanting to get into this space. Period. Right? Yeah. Like you go. You go to an event, guess who's there? Shams is there. Mm-hmm. You go to an event, yep. guess who's guess who's talking to everybody? Shams. Yep. You, She's doing personal work. She's doing client work. She's nice. Um, she goes up. She she's able to like talk. Like I think it goes even. I I feel like there's, in my opinion, there's a very clear path for the people that are making success on the NFT space, mm-hmm. and the people that were making success off the T- NFT space. And it's that that is the ingredient. It's lots of personal work. You know. Mm-hmm. Be nice to other people and go to events, and it's yeah. like, I mean, stick to that's it. That's like, this. And, yeah. and and break there. Obviously, there's more, but uh, but like, I feel like if you follow that recipe, you set yourself up for success in the future. And killing it yeah, on TikTok absolutely. help. TikTok helps as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah I'm off like- TikTok, but um, I, I was tired of seeing videos of people dancing. Man. Oh man, it's so good. TikTok, so it's. <laughs> It helps me sleep. It's so sad that it's the thing that helps me sleep at night now. Yeah. <laughs> that is an interesting life you live right now, Matt. Yeah. Dude, man, you don't want to be in my brain. You really do not want to be in my brain. <laughs> TikTok to help you sleep. TikTok drives me nuts, man. Tick, no other app is, in my life made me as upset as TikTok. Just because <laughs> I'm like, I can't Stand to see more kids dancing, doing these stupid dances to music and stuff. So you got to oh, dig in and yeah, like some see, things, yeah, and those will go away. It. It'll like the algorithm will The more you interact, get, the more yeah. the algorithm fixes. Okay, it. Yeah. Yeah. get rid of those. So like, like you know, I follow, I follow a few like, 
like physical artists, like sculptors and stuff like that, you know. And so they show me more sculptors, or I f- there's some funny stuff, dog you know, and cat or videos, dog and cat yeah, yeah. videos. I get a lot of a lot of funny goat stuff, you mm-hmm. know, because I like I, I my kid loves goats, so I save all the goat stuff, you know. <laughs> so, <Good stuff. clears throat> yeah. But so should we jump over to our friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's jump over. Friends to who our are friends. making drops. Um, uh, first off, uh, Nolan Martin, uh, uh, beautiful ornamental designs. Ari have bought one, um, uh, it, w- one of uh, their pieces last week, and I uh, like uh, uh, Ari have posted it online on Twitter that he was able to pick up this piece. And I commented, and I said, I'm so happy you're buying all the ones that I want so that I can eventually <laughs> buy them off of you, you know, <clears throat> but, uh, Nolan Martin's got a beautiful drop and I didn't, I didn't mention where that was. I yeah, think it was put a link in there or anything. Dang but... it. Was it super rare? I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, Dave, do you want to do a different one? Yeah, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would like to mention uh, Liam Clisham. He has one uh, that's that's out right now. He decided to put his first one out here, and this is uh, on Rareable. You got that? There you go. Yeah. This is out there. I like there. that you can just make out what it is. There it you says. go. Like right at, yeah. yeah, right at the right point. Right. <laughs> And uh, who else we got? Uh, well, of course, Brandon Clements, who we were talking about before, the yes. bathroom scene that he was working on, which was done in Unreal, is actually uh, on Rareable. And uh, so these drops, these drops, um, if we don't say a specific uh, time, they're probably already, already out, out there. Yeah. 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 Because we just, there's no way we can get to them all beforehand, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Uh, I can't wait until he puts up the reel to reel. I yeah, I, and it, I specifically told him I said wait till you get into foundation for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at least yeah. foundation. Yeah, but I I told him not to put it on rareable. I told him to start yeah, totally. with his first one with the bathroom. That was my suggestion. Uh, yeah, but also up on rareable is Paul Robinson. Yeah, and, uh, this yeah, was yeah, yeah. surprising Someone... to me. I I was like, oh, this is yeah. really cool. Yeah, so he's got this piece that he's working on for a uh, a short film called Bot, and this was I, I I think this was his opening shot from it uh, that he minted as an M- NFT, and it is it's so pretty. This is this is this is the reason why like I like so you know he does actual film work, short films and stuff like that, and I think this is super dope seeing an actual person who. A, a DP who knows lighting, who knows camera moves and stuff, doing something like this. So that that if I had more money, I would be buying that instantly. So someone who does, please go buy that because uh, uh, that's a dope piece. Yeah. Um, also, Bella. Uh, Bella, aka Piano in the Fox. Um, uh, they posted one. They've got one on Super Rare coming soon. Uh, they're just doing uh, some some music for it, uh, but uh, it's uh, Piano in the Fox on Super Rare. So uh, make sure and check that one out. Super cool stuff. I I love I love their illustration or their their animations and stuff like that. Super cool. Um, Omega next Fox. up, Omega Fox. If y'all know him from our Slack channel, you know, super active in there. Uh, doing a drop this week. I, I I don't know where. I don't know if they notified me. Um, about where, but that's it. But we'll get it. In, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll, it. We'll get it in post, right? These, these are the ones to. Uh, these are the ones to look out for. Yeah, yeah those um, I don't have links. Up. I got links for everybody else. So right, yeah. right. Um, so Julie, up, Julie Craft would be the next one. Yeah. Um. Uh. I don't know where Julie is. Po- where did Julie that's post on that? Foundation. And this is okay. Right so yeah. there you go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh. Julie posted this. I think. Uh. End of last week. Mm-hmm. Uh. On Foundation. Uh, super, super pretty stuff. So uh, uh, make sure and check that one out. Um, also, Luis Miranda. I, I, I think your list is different than mine, Dave. Yeah, I'm but, in the uh, notes. I'm... Yeah, but Luis Miranda is is up. He has uh, sold one of them, I think, so far on mm-hmm. here. He's got a number of different ones with different varieties, actually. Uh, the latest one that he posts was Starry Night. And uh, you can check that one out uh, with the others on Foundation. And 
Who else? Oh, Phil Roberts. Phil Roberts. Phil Roberts. Now, yeah, he's got one coming Ra- up for sure. Yeah, yeah, Raid Zero. Raid Zero is – he's dropping one tomorrow on, on Rareable, I believe. It is the third part of the <laughs> trilogy of the Beeple Man yeah. uh, uh, pieces. Uh, can no. uh, Phil, I don't know if I can make a last minute request. It's probably too late, but <laughs> and maybe it's the fourth one. You got to do like a really light beer in there. Maybe just put like H2O on a beer glass or something like that. I mean, like, he only, uh, but people only drinks Coronas. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, do like beer water. Like it has to be, you have to like yeah. talk about how it's like weak, weak lean beer. It's like something like that. Yeah. Man, your accent came out real bit, real big when you said water. <laughs> <laughs> but he also yeah, has suck. he's got a, a listing on uh foundation yeah. as well if you want to check yeah, the stuff out he's got there those, he's moving those, into that too uh hairy pictures that he's been doing which i think are, are, are pretty cool yeah. pretty cool yeah and i might so, have something uh, to do with his with his drop for next yeah week, totally. in, a, in a way so in a way keep an ear so is that is that. that tomorrow or is that next week that for the people man uh t- that's tomorrow Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's what I Tuesday thought. the 9th. And uh, also, James Ramirez got a got to show off Ramirez, what he's doing. Man. Now, this stuff yeah. deserves more attention than it's getting so far. It really does. I'm surprised there has not been a bid yet, because I, I don't know. It's it's one of those things like like I I'm seeing all this amazing work coming out from all of my friends, and I'm like I I want this work, you know. But like it's like. I would I, I it, it's another one of those things where I can't I just can't afford it. So if I can at least pimp your work out on our show, let me do it. You right. know. Now this so, piece anyway. is uh, VR. This v- is all yeah, done was, in VR. Yeah, it was all all Both animated and everything in in VR, which are, are they're just beautiful pieces. Absolutely beautiful. So. And then also on foundation we have G Rant. He's got something up. G Rant, yeah. Yeah. Make sure you check Beautiful him stuff. out. Nice to and, uh, before I've seen him. Yeah. Yeah, he, I talk to him every day. We oh, chat. Nice. We chat on on Slack every day. Yeah. You guys follow each other on TikTok? Uh, no, <laughs> I I don't. I I don't. I don't post anything on TikTok. I know. I'm just being. You know, clear. I'm just. Uh, I'm I'm just a lurker, who occasionally comments. Uh, we've also got, uh, let's see, uh, Mitch Myers. This is great. Yeah. I, I love that Mitch Myers is doing this because after talking to him uh, on the show yeah. a couple weeks ago, I feel like this is perfect for for him right now. And just the Absolutely. way he felt about the industry in general and wanting to get back to the art, I feel like this is just this is just perfect. So yeah, uh, he's got some stuff. He's yeah. been doing some different drops and and also sharing other people's. We've been you know sharing each other's drops and things online and. Uh, so he's got these up on foundation, as you can see yeah. here, and also really, really mm-hmm. excited to see Mitch Myers stuff. Yeah, you know, back, getting back into it and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I, and I, I don't know if y'all have noticed this, but it, I've, I've, I've been, you know, I was on the the clubhouse chat and seeing him on Facebook. I feel like this has kind of given him a new lease on life, you know. <laughs> and I love that. I love that our, that, that this stuff can do, or that at least the MoGraph because, industry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the MoGraph industry. So it's like, you know, it, it's it's nice to see people getting excited about this stuff again. Yeah. You know, yeah. about doing work. I like Mitch being around. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Um, also, Winbush did a, a drop on Super Rare this week. And uh, yeah. it was really cool because we were all sitting in the Discord and, and chatting up. And all of a sudden, some somebody started like a little bidding war going on on his. So... We were like mm-hmm. chatting him up and texting him and getting him in there. Like, what's going on with this, man? So uh, congrats on that. And, yeah. man, we have so many in the community here. Yeah, it's, such a, it's a great piece. Winbush like, dropped another piece. Uh, he did. Uh, either today or yesterday. Yeah. 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 Um, also wanted to point out that uh, Chad Ashley has gotten to the scene. As yeah. Well, with some pieces up on uh, Foundation, like it seems like most people are doing now. He, Two of them uh, have already sold. Uh, yeah, two of them are already sold. Yeah, there's still one piece left. Yeah. And uh, next on the list is uh, Cornelius Damrick, who, congratulations oh here. He Such, he... like, here. here's the thing. I, I want to give him huge props and say congratulations. That is so fantastic. 
you know classic piece. but i feel I, I wanted you to get more i feel like for for me what that go piece for? is worth a million dollars because it's so it's so a part of our industry i think it went for like what a hundred and hundred and thirty six thousand or something like that something like that what did i yeah close to that it was yeah it, yeah it went it know. went for a lot of money but man like i i me personally think i i think that piece is worth a million dollars so whoever bought that y'all got a steal that's true i feel like yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, that is but the congrats, classic Cornelius. I'm, I'm really i'm really really happy for you it's like classic I mean, octane with, octane three mm-hmm, login screen mm-hmm. uh, i was on all the promotions for everything we're all going to remember yeah. that when we think Octane. It was a all dope piece. It was just yeah. a dope it's, piece in general. You, I mean, like, when that piece came out, it was like, okay, damn, Octane is the best render engine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> you know what I mean? The war's like, over. Gosh, yeah. No more arguments, yeah. Chad Ashley. Octane's the best. Look at this render Cornelius yeah. just did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lorcan so also has some uh, pieces yeah. up on Foundation. I like what Lorcan's doing, too. Yeah, I like uh, the, this. The work is really cool. Yeah. What is the oh, QR man. code for? I don't know. Why don't you uh, here zoom it in? I'll I'll, I'll see. Yeah, I, I'm pretty zoomed in already. I don't know. Oh, if okay. I can, well, I'll try it. We'll see if you can pick oh, it up from on. there. But it's, it's many Let's times removed. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Here, I'll Let's move see, my cursor. Think. See, if you 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 know, you could just go to the site yourself. I could yeah. just go to the site. I'm they have a search now, now if you go to the creator page, which is nice. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, or the creator, the creator page. page. Yeah, or the cre- the artists or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So, um Martin uh v- Van Vanners, I I have never heard it pronounced out loud, so yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's the one who does all the cool uh renders of the the astronaut holding up different signs that say different things, especially like mm-hmm. with David Aryev's course. So, he has one that is the astronaut holding up one of the signs with the banana tape to it. Mm-hmm. which is fun oh that's funny yeah see there's so many different ideas like this like this mm-hmm. one that i dropped mm-hmm. you know we'll talk the, about uh, that yeah uh, we we will okay. talk about that because okay. we're going to show our drops of course we're going to show our drop okay. but uh yeah we'll talk about that too because i was like oh man all right we'll, we'll explain that in a minute but yeah. uh, just a few more here and uh ross i wanted to mention ross uh put up uh quite a few on foundation but there, there is one called Server of Discord that he did this week where uh, it, it's basically playing a bunch of Discord sounds and it's just F over and over and over and over mm-hmm. in the Discord yeah. because yeah, yeah, yeah. That was this, a really pretty this was one. the uh, Maker's Place Discord overheating and failing whenever people told everybody to hit F. So check that one out. And then two more here. Tom Coben has been killing it. He's working on some other stuff as well yeah. that he's going to put on a couple different platforms, I think. But his, you know, Thomas the Tank is on there, mm-hmm. the the train stuff. And I think he needs to do the bowling one. He needs to do the bowling machine somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I was talking to him on the Discord about that. I told him he needed to do the bowling one. Yeah. And he, he said I, he, he's pretty sure someone licensed it out for like two years, you know, like he's right. already licensed it out, so I don't know if he can actually sell Interesting. it. Interesting. Yeah. So I told him just he might be able add to a pair of bowling shoes in there, and then it's a completely yeah. different piece, right? Yeah. He uh, also said he's got to go back in and, and add a power cord to it because it's the one thing that made right, it, right. A bunch quote, of people unquote, were complaining fake. that there's no power cord. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm and the last um, one on I, the list is Claudio. I wonder though if he could. I wonder if he could sell it though, because you're not giving away the copyright to it, right? Right. right. I don't know. Probably. I think uh, he might be able to if he looks at it. Yeah. That's. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Do this, and then I'll come back to that because I want to talk about the copyright stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the last one on the list here is, uh, it, yeah, Claudio. He he just mm-hmm. got me this this morning, so he's got some up here on yeah. Rarible. Notice ordinary that. politics. Nine out of ten. I yeah. own one of those. I own one of those. Oh, you do? Nice. I do, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right. And, uh, of course, we're going to talk about our drops real quick. I'll I'll go first because we're going to talk about yours for a second. But uh, do I even have these pulled up anywhere? I, don't I have even, no I idea. I don't even know. Uh, your drop. So you were working on this the other night when we were doing the uh, doing Yeah, so the this one has actually sold already, you know, but it's an interesting story. 
you know, this was the one that I I originally posted and I was like, you know, it was it was the whole thing where it wasn't selling. And I was like, you know what? I need to stop focusing on the money. I need to just focus on the art, you know? And I, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to post it for 0.1 ether because that's as low as I could go. And if people like it, if collectors want it, there will be a bidding war and I'll make some money, but whatever right now, I just want to price it to where I can get the work out there. I want people to, to, to know me, you know? Um, so I posted it up there. Uh, I'm, 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 I, I was working on some stuff you know, some work. And I was like, all right, I've got a little bit of time. I'm going to create something. And I had the idea, you know, the Sassina Pa'un uh, pipe, the the famous painting mm-hmm. or whatever. This is not like, a pipe. Should... Yeah, this is not a pipe. Right. I was like, I, I should do, I should do one that says this is not an NFT. I think that would be funny, mm-hmm. you know, not having, and I, I had a feeling it was a very unoriginal idea, you know? And so I didn't want to go searching for it because I knew if I did, I would probably find something because great minds and I, think I, I alike. I would get discouraged. I would get discouraged because you know, uh, uh, like the uh, like Marhin or uh, uh, posted earlier with the banana on the the thing. You know the the duct tape banana. I was like, oh, that would be great as an NFT. I should do that, even though I'm pretty sure someone's probably already done it. Anyway, so I went through. I didn't want to get discouraged, so I didn't look anything up. I just I just did the work. You know. Modeled the pipe real quick, used GSG materials, you know, uh, threw them in, triplanar, blah, blah, blah. I figured out, I I, I found a stock picture of weed, and I put <laughs> weed in there, you know, nice. and then figured out how to do the cool, like, embers and stuff. I had never done that before, so, you know, learning a little bit while having fun, did some TFD smoke, you know. It, it, all in all, it probably took me, you know, an hour and a half to maybe to do the whole thing and render it. I just wanted to get some more. I wanted something up on foundation. And I, I felt like that, you know, kind of gave a little bit of my personality as well. You know, like I, I like to joke around. I like to have a good time, you know, whatever. And so I posted it up there. What are you saying? What are you going to hmm? say, Dave? Oh, I was what just going to say we were on the Discord when you posted Yeah, we were it. on the Discord. Yeah, and so I posted it on the Discord, and I said, hey, look what I just minted. And they're like, oh, so-and-so just posted, just did the exact same thing a yeah. couple days ago. And I was like, oh, oh man. I felt so bad you've been sitting there working yeah. on that. But, but you didn't, the but they didn't put but, what you, they didn't write the same thing you wrote, to be fair. Well, so uh, the, the, the art piece, the original art piece is called The Treachery of Print, um, I believe, or The Treachery of Images. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, both him and I... Uh, uh, named it the treachery of NFTs. So unfortunately, it was the exact same name, you know. But uh, I did put uh, uh, Sasina Pa Un NFT, and he put Sasina Pa Un Pipe. Uh, slightly different, whatever, yeah. you know. And they look slightly different, but it's it's whatever. It's all yeah. you know. It's all parody. You know that that was the yeah. the point. And you know, you've you got the, expect- the yeah. You can't expect to know if somebody else did it i mean yeah yeah but yeah, there's the different categories there's the there's the nfts that are like jokey or parody yeah. there's the nfts that are collabs you've got the nfts yeah. that are for the art and then you got also like nft memes and you know reminting yeah. tweets and things like that so there's, right you know exactly. different categories and so it's yeah. it's totally fine you know and so i i just wanted to i just wanted to get it out there i put it for 0.1 ether you know and then a couple of our friends bid on it you know because they i guess they saw i was down <laughs> <laughs> and then a couple of collectors bid you're, on it you're too. Dorp. And i will say this actually felt really nice like um i got this tweet today so i think someone was trying to i'm going to my profile because i want to find the tweet someone was trying to bid on that other one you know, mm-hmm. and so somehow foundation got messed up as uh, the auction was ending and the transaction was stuck, you know, and unconfirmed and it didn't it didn't go through. So someone else ended up buying that other version of this. And uh, uh, the person who bought mine was found mine, you know, and was like, oh, oh this, I so see. they tweeted out shortly after I, I I wasn't able to get that one. I was able to win an auction on foundation with a similar <laughs> NFT. So perhaps this was a blessing in disguise. Love my new piece from Matt Milstead. I was really, oh, nice. that, that, that made me feel really good. That's cool. That's really you know? Dope. Yeah. Yeah. What so, a great story. Uh, yeah, 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 it was it was it it, it 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 was nice. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I made no money off of this, you know, because minting fees are outrageous. Right. I paid, I, I you know, you pay 
50 something dollars to mint it 50 something dollars to post it and then once it sells i had to pay 75 dollars just to get the money out you know i'm out 175 dollars and i sold it for 235 you know which no big deal but at least some collectors got it now you know and it's it's i don't know it, it it's the works out there, which is I fun. love that yeah. you did that. You know? I think that's so so awesome, man. I yeah. really do think it's awesome. And I plan that. I I plan on continuing doing that. You know, posting stuff on Rarible for a dollar, or posting stuff on Foundation for 0.1 ether as as low as I can go. You know, I'll I, I pay the minting fees. I don't care. You know, because this is just all about getting the work out there. And I yeah, put, and um, your work's obviously worth more than a dollar. You know, and I, then I, it's I, like here's the thing, and like it gives a chance for my friends to buy the work if they want it. And who knows, one day if I blow up for some reason, that means they've got, you know, something that's worth two dollars eventually. <laughs> You know, no, it's like it's instant. Like whoever gets that, it's got a higher value than what they paid for. It. Right, 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 right. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, the this, this is a new space. It's it's like, you know, you've got you've got Twitter and you've got, you know, Instagram and stuff and you're not Instagram and Twitter famous. Do I want to become Twitter famous in order to become NFT famous nah. or do I just post my work up on NFTs? And if people want to buy them, people can buy them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Make the art, let the rest come. Make the art, let the rest come. Yeah, I love that. And you've got the kind of parody ones and things. I personally put my parody people thingy that I that I did up on right, right, Rarible. Right. Okay. Now, right. now, when it comes to doing foundation, I wanted to to be something that actually like that I was really happy with and that it was yeah. about the art and like I'm real. I feel really good about this piece. I'm not just throwing up. Right. anything right so this is what i'm trying to do for Thanks. my foundation and, and hope it's good because i feel like on rareable yeah. because everybody can get in you just mm -hmm. can put up whatever and it doesn't matter and i've yeah. been telling people this too like i know rareables out there and everybody can put whatever they want up there but yeah uh if you're going to get an invite you should really put some thought into into what you're going to put on an invite site you know a little bit more like yeah. on the art the artistic side of things i know there's memes that are selling for a ridiculous amount of money on there of course but right uh so i i will say that uh that mine is my my dorp i, I keep calling him the dorp Your it's dorp. the dorp yeah. uh you know just like holding just changing the Holy. words my dorp is coming out tomorrow and that's going to be uh heart seed and wait did i say rare on on founda foundation, foundation. tomorrow yeah. And uh, that is going to be Heartseed, and I actually, you know, I'll put a link in the show notes to everything, oh, including dope. mine here. This is kind of like my promo to show it off, and a lot of people are doing these promos. I did original audio for the whole thing, yeah. uh, so you can see what it looks like, and this is what it's going to look like. It's in kind of a different size format. It's not just 16 by 9 or whatever. So yep. you can check that out. Just want to throw it out there, and hopefully people like it. I hope you like it, as yeah. they say. Yeah, it looks dope. It's a cool piece. Thanks. Yeah, I've been really into TFD and stuff, and I just I loved how it looked, and I loved how the smoke came out, and I'm like, this is this is one that I really want to put out there mm -hmm. as a piece for my dorp. Good piece. Yeah, your dorp. I got a question for both you and Matt mm -hmm. now, because yeah. both of you just plugged TFD. Have you guys been using Embergen at all? And if you I haven't, why not? It yet I'm I'm really I I've played around with it for sure. I want it to be you native know? in. I want it to be native before yeah. I use it. Yeah, like that's what I'm that's yeah. what I'm waiting for. So yeah. once it's native, you better believe that's all I'm going to use. It's going to be outrageous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I named my yeah. dog puppet uh, Dorpy, by the way. Dorpy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here he is. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dorpy. Hey, Matt. How you doing? Uh, how, how's the crypto art world? Is this is what I have to deal with on Skype. He, he's, dorpy, <laughs> he's Dorpy the, do the Doge dog. Yeah. Because he's a Doge, Doge dog. dog. How's that's the crypto funny. art game, Matt? Is it a Doji Doge world? Wow. Yeah, I was gonna put my <laughs> NFT up there too, but you know what they say? People do NFTs <laughs> just for the Doge. Right? This is like yeah. the the shtick they used to have on MTV. <laughs> that that little like I think it was like a little Chihuahua dog or something yeah. like that, and it would go and just harass people. Oh yeah, the you're talking oh. about uh uh, uh is that the uh, Eminem thing? In, in, no, yeah, uh, for the me to poop comic on. Dog. Yeah, Triumph, the insult, insult comic, comic dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But he needs a cigar or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so. all right. Well, well, Dorpy, I think it's time to go. All right, guys. So. Well, uh, 
you know, check out my new Genesis drop on Rarible. I'll see you later. All right, let's get out of wow. here. Wow. Yeah. Dorby <laughs> needs his own account no, now. No, you gotta go. <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah. Hey, hey, bro, Dor, you sure you don't want to do a collab? Let's do a collab. I don't know. Hey, you got an invite to Foundation? Yeah. <laughs> I need an invite to Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. That's good funny. old Dorpy. Dorpy. He's always good for a laugh. <laughs> uh, I already mentioned the oh. clubhouse calls, uh, which are going great. Like, uh, Bro, Dor, you had the clubhouse call last night with, uh, with Barton. And, uh, of course, the REVs are doing the weekly ones, usually on Fridays, which are great. We're trying to see if we can record those they make it impossible to record you can't yeah you know. i think christo might have something i did one i think it, i don't know maybe someone else remembers it i don't even remember i don't know what the hell day it is anymore uh i think it was on tuesday maybe it was on wednesday of last week and uh it was awesome it was like yeah it was absolutely packed and like so many people showed up it was super super cool um i think it was wednesday i think it was wednesday of last week yeah and uh and yeah i wish i i had it recorded but like at one moment i looked and like everyone i had up on the panel i'm like holy crap this panel is insane it's everybody awesome. up here right now. it's so cool that all the people who are showing up for these it's so great yeah yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it. I, I, I like Clubhouse. I think, hey, do you guys think it would be as successful if we weren't in a pandemic when the, the app came out? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so yeah. at all. I think this has been a great yeah. outlet for people. Yeah. I, I love that you can just sit and listen. Uh, like sometimes sometimes if I if I'm I need to purpose participate for some reason like i almost feel like oh i don't want to do i just want to sit and and lurk and just listen you know that's that's mm -hmm. what i enjoy doing i'll put it on while i'm working and it's like if you really feel strongly like you want to chime in on something you can raise your hand and it's cool because of course it's nothing much different than like a group phone call it's just just kind of yeah, organizing it's, a, it, it's like way. a radio show right someone else yeah. was saying that they're like is it kind of like a radio show and i'm like yeah i guess it is uh, but like you could bring people up to like sit up there and talk like the whole time. And uh, but yeah, it's kind of like that. You yeah. know, people are like calling in for questions and you've got you can have some guests and stuff like that on the show. It's like an earnings uh, call. I'll be, right, I'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah, but it's got like, but it's got like the virtual aspect where like you can see everybody that's l like watching and listening. You can like yeah. learn more about them and like, I'm like that's so it's got the interactive like experience as well. But yeah, I was thinking that too. I was like, I have a feeling if this came out when we weren't in the pandemic, like would anybody would we be all that interested? We'd probably be like, no, we're like going out, you know. And so like you eliminate people like leaving their houses. And it's right. like, well, I guess we could like sit in on a Saturday night and just talk more industry talk. Yeah, it's and it's it sucks that you can't like archive these. That's the hard part because there's so much gold in there. And it's like, no, I get you want people to show up, but not everybody can always make it. Maybe that's yeah. why so many people are on because they know they can't catch it later. Um, yeah, but you know, we're trying to record it is just impossible. I, I have a really great way to record things off of iPads and things remotely or whatever, and they, they block all of that. You know, so the solution for me to record REFs was to put two two iPads next to each other under a blanket and let one play and one record, which is ridiculous and sounds terrible. The only way you could do it is to connect one to an iPad. Uh, or connect an, an old iPad that has the actual headphone jack on it, which they got rid of. It's like, I can't even connect oh, a headphone yeah. jack to these old ones or to these new ones. So to, I'll have to get an old iPad, get clubhouse on that in order to record, but they have weird policies. I think like they find out you're recording, they'll kick you out or something. Yeah, so. I think so. Yeah. I, I guess I did hear that. I, I think like people found that out like after they didn't know that you couldn't. Cause I, I guess it was probably a, a couple weeks ago at this point that Christo was like mentioning that he was like recording them and like the setup that they had to do, but maybe he stopped since then if they're like cracking down and trying to stop people from doing that. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I, I do wonder though, like I'm, I'm cool with it. Like them getting deleted because honestly, like if they weren't, do you know how many NFT talks there'd be by this point on the webs floating yeah, around? It'd sure. be nuts. So it's like, maybe it's kind of a blessing that they delete and they disappear. If you're a part of it, cool. You get to see it. If not, they, they're gone. Right. And, uh, and that's that. Yeah. 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 And Mark says there's a headphone jack adapter for the phone. Yeah. You do that too. I just, 
don't have one. I got to figure out where I can get one. The um, yeah. other notes that we do have here, though, gosh, there's so much more. Um, real, <laughs> real quick, I think it was funny. I think it was a short show, yeah, right? We were yeah, sitting in the, we were sitting in the, the Discord NFT and uh, chatting the other night. And I was like, guys, I'm, I'm curious. Do you think Crypto888 is actually Beeple? No. Giving back to the community. I, it's just a joke. No. I'm not saying it really is, but I'm yeah. just joking. It, it, it was really funny because uh, Joey Camacho chimes in mm-hmm. and he starts going through Crypto 888's tweets and reading them with Winkleman's voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The mysterious, the mysterious collectors, you know. But You know, uh, speaking of people, real quick. Um, I just want to say for I, I don't know if we get any collectors, but um, so the infected piece, you know, I, I check my infected piece every single day, what the prices are, you know, and it's been a while since there's been a sale because the last one was two hundred and eighty eight thousand mm-hmm. since then. Like there's been quite a few price drops. So um, and the infected piece is one of the most uh is the most rare of the three of his open editions. So if you're looking to get an infected piece, I'd say go for it now because there's a couple, there's like two uh, or three that are re- uh, under that 288. So it's probably a really good deal. One of them's 128,000. Another one's 164,000. It's yeah, like, but what are the numbers? One, because the uh, what number they are is going to make a difference too. Uh, mm-hmm. The One of them's number 77. Uh, another one's kind of low. It's like number 40, you know? Oh, I so, wonder, wonder who owns that one. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm just saying they're priced to sell right now. <laughs> I saw a really good price drop on that um, number eight into the ether. Yeah, I know. It went from 8,888,888 to only, it dropped by $8 million to only $888,888. Yeah. That's a deal. That's yeah, a y'all deal that right one. there. Wonder who yeah, owns, wonder who owns you that get one. it for for ninety percent off the original asking price. It's funny. You'd anyway, be stupid not to buy that. Well, yeah. I, I am. Yeah. It, it is very at those prices. It, how can we not? <laughs> yeah, and no, that's it, not all. What's interesting is uh, because I've been watching all these all the Beeple pieces, you know, and stuff like that. I actually had someone hit me up on Instagram the other day saying, "Hey, do you want to sell this? I'll trade you for one of the Beeple Christie's ones." You know, huh. and I, I, I thought about it for a second. He's oh, like, no. I've got two of them. I'm like, oh, you have no. two of them. I said, you can buy mine. Oh, I'm not really looking to buy it. I was mm, like, all right, whatever. I don't know. That that's sounding a little iffy to me, but you know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. but I, I mean, you know, I've been watching them, and there's only been a few sales here and there. I'm curious how the the. I'm curious. To I tried see to go away from the mic, James. The I, I was gonna. My <laughs> if my stomach is fully empty, I I will get super nauseous. I had to. Yeah. I had to do that. Sorry, dude. If you if you puke or pass out on this episode, it only makes the episode better. That's right. true. We could right. sell it as an NFT. I have I have actually <laughs> been saying we should sell all the drop episodes as an NFT. Right. You know. I don't think we can hit the up, file size limit on that correctly. Yeah, yeah, but you you do it as like a still image, and mm-hmm. then you do the attachment with it, and the attachment with it is like a Dropbox link or whatever to the actual gotcha, thing. Gotcha. What, what's right. the file size limit? What it is makes, the it file? depends on the site. Yeah. Oh, okay, like that's twenty what I meg, and then there's like fifty meg, I think. On I'm some of them. I'm not exactly sure how low all of that works, and I know like it goes to decentralized servers in the end, but I'm not <laughs> sure if when you do the original post on some of these sites, if they're actually having to do with the upload limit of their particular front end web software before it goes into that process. Yeah. Cause so. Nifty's is high Nifty, from yeah. what I, what I've, from oh, yeah. what I've seen. Yeah. Cause I was like, cause all mine are 4k and I was like, and I'm like, damn it, I'm going to have to reduce the hell out of these. And, uh, and it was like, Nope, they're all good. I was like, Whoa, all right, we're good yeah. to go then. Once I, you, uh, once you get done with that drop, I'd love to at off, off the air, pick your brain about like, you know, the process and stuff like that, because I feel like that's that's something that not a lot of people, especially with Nifty, get a lot, get to uh, experience. With you the, know, with the file limit, though, it's sometimes if you've got a lot of stuff that needs some better compression, you, you might yeah. it, it might be difficult. Like mine, 
mine in particular, it loops four times before it does a main the main loop again. Like it plays out yeah. four times in a loop, and so oh, wow. and my music is designed to loop at the beginning of that, right? So you'll hear mm-hmm. this little up upward tick, and then it kind of loops at the beginning. the The thing is, I wanted to put a couple loops in there, but I also wanted to keep it full res, and I and I didn't want it to have a bunch of compression in that smoke because smoke easily has like terrible artifacts or artifacts. Yeah. So I ended up having to like highly compress it as much as possible to hit that 50 meg limit for foundation. Uh, but then also I had to back off the resolution and only let it loop one time in order for it to look good. So that's yeah. something yeah. to consider when you're, when you're building something like that. I would have been screwed if I had a 50 meg limit. Like, you know, that's, 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 for me, that's kind of a bottleneck because I want to, my, like, whoever gets my work to have, like, crazy resolution to it. I know. And, I would love and, for yeah. them to get the ProRes files, right? Yeah. And if, like, you, know? you have to go anything longer, like, if, than, like, a five second thing or even a, th- I mean, even a five second, like, at HD would be higher than 50 megs, you know, or at 4K mm-hmm. would definitely be. Um, you could do an so, unlockable yeah, kind of that, that uh, you know, unlocks the super high res version they can have with it or yeah. something if you wanted but that's not what's actually like tokenized yeah, right not it's not minted. well the yeah. the link to the unlockable is minted mm. so a lot of people will put yeah. the you can do like a bitly link and that bitly link yeah. can change if you wanted it to you know and that goes to something else but again no that's the course it's not the original being high res the minted version but you could provide it in case they wanted to use it, because my thought is like if somebody wanted to put this on a, in a f- digital frame or mm-hmm. or just yeah, really exactly. be able to like study it and look at it, you know, and just you know appreciate what it actually looked like on the screen before it was run through garbage compression. Right. Yeah. Be nice. Yeah, because I think out of sixteen pieces, I only had two that I had to like slightly adjust, and they're they're like they're still like very high res, but they're just under what, a, like what the standard of a 4k resolution would be. But it's mm-hmm. like, no, it, it's still there. Um, yeah. but yeah, I think for nifty and like, I don't think they care sharing this, but like, I think I was able to do up to 340 megabits. And so cool. it's like, you know, most, almost everything that I had, I had a couple pieces that were longer and those were like, you know, 350 or 345 they were all close so i barely had to adjust them to to get them to fit the the length to where it's like if someone was to put it on a big screen somewhere like the, yeah. it's really gonna hold up so cool. what do you think about studios getting into this space right now and studios and brands in general i am personally super on the fence about it uh yeah. I, i'll say this like I can make some exceptions. We actually talked a bit about it on clubhouse yesterday as well. Um, I'm, and who knows my mind can change at any point. Uh, um, I like to be, I like to depends on how that. much money a studio is going to pay you to mint their NFT. Right. I think, yeah. I think there's some things in question at first though. I'm completely against it. I don't like the idea of studios doing it. This is like a decentralized space. That's like giving the artist the name and it's mm-hmm. not housed in, under a studio again. It's not like now it like, I, I don't want this to become a space where it's like, and the studios again are the ones like, and the, all the artists disappear. Yeah. You know, right. it's just a yeah. function of that studio name and everyone's hidden. And I hate that idea. I'm like, no, this is like, this is for the artists and it's like uplifting artists and not studios. Now, obviously like, I feel like it should be on paper. If your track record over the past decade is to not pay employees overtime, have employees come in on the weekends, not give them any compensation, work them insane hours, bring artists, young artists in for two years and put them in the grindhouse to where when they leave after two years, they never want to work in the industry again. If you are one of those studios, you are not allowed in this space yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> We yeah. will determine what studios, the artists, will, what studios will come and enter in this space. And you've better been nice and treating us well, <laughs> paying us properly, and like, and now you can come into this space. Um, it's like this is our space. So like, I truthfully don't like the idea. And it's so funny. I was like, I, I, and I, I love Barton, right? You yeah. guys know I love Barton. Barton yeah. knows I love Barton. We're good friends. I'm like. As I know it right now, he's the only studio that I would make the exception for. Yeah. Because <laughs> cause I know his interest is 
in the best of all of his employees. Right. And they're all going to get a percentage cut. Right. And yeah, yeah. he treats them well. He he pays them for overtime, right? Like he's trying to get cool projects in for them. And sometimes there's lull in that when you're trying to just have your employees do dope work all the time. Like there can be moments where you don't have work. Um, and so I feel like I could make the exception for a company like already been chewed because of those, those couple little things. Um, yeah. It's like, okay, they're all going to get a cut this, that, and the other. And not only that, he made a really good point, which was that a lot of these artists, a lot of artists have a lot of talent, but they can't get into the space. And this could be a way to get them paid for an NFT yeah. and part yeah. of it where if it wasn't through this, they would just have nothing. But I'm like, I, I just hate the idea, and I'm, I'm not going to just start bashing companies that I, I feel like don't treat yeah. artists well. But I'm like, I hate the idea of them getting in here, and it's like you don't know if they're paying, how much they're paying, and maybe if the artists speak out against yeah. it, they get fired. Right. Who knows what's happening? Yeah, or even a company like getting some of its employees like, oh, I've got this idea. I've got this idea. Let's let's go ahead and execute on this. And then they go and sell it as an NFT and don't compensate yeah. any of the artists. It's like, why not? They're paying them a salary. It's their yeah. job to make something if they work there. If that's yeah. what they tell them they make, I mean, they can quit or they can make it, you know. And with yeah. Barton, it's it's kind of that feeling like, of course, you know that everybody is it works very well together. Mm -hmm. And they collaborate really well together. You can see that in the work that they're putting out, obviously just amazing things. And the thing about working for clients is they're not able to all collaborate in that same way on something that's really fully their idea. There's always going to be that client involvement where, no, it has to be this because this is what we're advertising. But if you could take an out of the blue idea that has nothing to do with client or client's needs or what they're trying to sell, like selling a product mm -hmm. and, and take that idea, I'd be interested to see how they collaborate with each other on a project like that. And just, just knowing Barton's attitude toward his employees, you just, you know, that it's, it's being done right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And yeah, what about what about the brands, though? Yeah, like like like, like James Nike said in the chat, Taco Bell dropping their Taco NFTs. Taco Bell. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will not be surprised if KFC does a drop here in the next. Like, but here's the thing. Weeks. KFC will do it right. They'll go to smear balls and yeah, and then you're good. But I'm talking about like. Somebody gave an example. I think it was in your call last night. Somebody did a drop for some product. Oh, I think it was it was uh, it was one of those zero zero carb alcohol drinks. Like uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, it was White Claw. Was it White Claw? Where the yeah, nifty it was, was like just of, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, someone's yeah, just I holding White a White Claw. Claw like that's not that's not cool. Like, that's just an no, advertisement. It's, it's yeah, art it's is whack. art. It's I, I hope I hope people. Yes, yeah, the Campbell soup can. I hope people see past that though. You know, like it's not pop art or whatever. It's just like it's it's a cash grab that these companies are like. You know how how else can we make money and jump into this space? I, I you're not going to keep the companies out, but I think again if. You make it so everybody's educated within the space, and it's like, well, they didn't buy it. I mean, I've seen some celebrities put some stuff up, and I was like, I mean, they sold, but in my mind, that was a bomb. They bombed. It did TJ not Miller? sell. Yeah, that. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, <laughs> good. I'm glad, but you know why? Yeah. That's because we are keeping everybody educated about what is cool in the space and mm -hmm. what is not cool in the space. And if we sell that, then yeah. that's the market. You know, and so we have the ability to make it if somebody comes into this space and, you know, we're, we're like, yeah, if Ta Taco Bell comes in, we're like, no, man, like we're going to we are the ones who hold the value on it. I mean, obviously, I guess they could bid on their own thing and, and, and like mark it up. But, you know, as long as like we play the game right and uh, I, I think we can control the narrative of who enters this space and who doesn't. The companies are definitely going to come in. I don't even like it like. I mean, I love me some Wu Tang, right? Oh, Wu Tang yeah. had their drop, and I thought it was awful. I looked at it, I was like, 
like do it right go get there's so many amazing artists out here that would love to work with wu-tang who would knock this out of the park and you did some whack piece and put that up there it's like come on man see the thing through like like bring in an actual digital artist into this space and uh and then you'll get you'll you'll really do well in it and if not i I kind of want all these companies to kind of crash and burn it's like no the the artists have the power in this space the collectors love art and if the artists don't say that that one's approved i don't think it gets approved part honestly and yeah. how does the curation and even critique work? There, it's like okay, art is subjective, so you can't critique me. H- how does how does one even as a company go about? Like, what about? I mean, Nifty is kind of high up there, right? And and then the contrast to that, you got Rarible with like everything. So where's the middle ground right. where you're at least doing a little bit of of sorting and quality control? How do you decide? I mean, it, it's okay. It's goes back to classic capitalism right Mm -hmm. you know what i I don't know no no, that's not necessarily true because i've seen a bunch of crap you know that i deem as crap you know being sold for lots of money you know the space is young though too and i think that plays a part of it like people don't know like a lot of collectors don't know what all the artists know you know they see it there and they're like oh okay must be cool and it's like no that's actually a rip off of so-and-so's work or that's just a copy or speaking of that, that exact same thing happened to me. So some rando on Twitter messaged me and said, explain yourself and posted that other version of the same one that I did. They're like, explain yourself. It's like, yeah, Dude, you jerk. Okay, How dare you have the same a idea bit of as someone art else history for you and point out that we were both imitating one specific artist. Right. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah. It didn't say anything after that. No. <laughs> well, it's Twitter, yeah. so you can yell at anybody Explain anonymous, yourself. anonymously. But as far as critique, I mean, you have to imagine if you're a believer that this space is going to live for a long time, and I think it, I think it is. I mm-hmm. think it's here yeah. forever. I think um, it is too. Just like the traditional art gallery scene, you know there's going to be someone who's going to start publishing work and uh, and critiquing um, and being that art critic that goes and says what they believe is that has value, what they believe mm-hmm. doesn't, and and you know that could weigh in on a lot as well. I mean, whether we, you like that or not, I mean, most people hate that about the traditional art gallery world, the the yeah. the, the art critics and stuff like that, food critics. Everyone seems to hate critics for the most part, <laughs> um, but but they do have a pool of some sort. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the Rotten Tomatoes thing. You know, how many people watch a movie? And right. then, like, look at what the Rotten Tomato is before. Yeah. It's like, and well, we're determining and dictating whether the movie's good just based on that. Yeah. Um, so I think that'll enter into the space as well. I think it'll offer good things and bad things too, right? Like, obviously, like, it'll help because I, I, I see on Foundation, I thought Foundation started off, like, really hot. I was like, ooh, this could be a really dope one. And to me, it's just, like, plateaued or flatlined or just declined. No searchability. There's no searchability. And I was know, like, I, I see amazing easily. art. I see artists that I, I really respect and hold very high up. And I'm like, no bids at all. Nothing. Yeah. It's because, and I look at the work around them and I'm like, it's not even on the same level. It doesn't even deserve to be next to yours. And yours is just flushed out. Um, yeah. And and so I, I love the idea of artists getting to invite artists. I thought that was super cool. But then you're leaving it to like, it's like artists are obviously just going to give them to their friends and stuff as well. And like, mm-hmm. try, and like, and, and there's no level of, of what the art is. Now, obviously art is subjective, but you know, I think a lot of us could agree on 80% of good work and bad work. Yeah. Uh, and maybe there's another 20% that like people are indifferent on or like, I could see how it could be good. Um, but I, I think majority speaking, we could probably determine what is good and what is not. Yeah. And do you think that the supply, I got to use the restroom again. <laughs> be right back. There's <laughs> supply and demand right now in this industry, right? There's going to be a need for artists or lack of a need for artists. Where are we right now? Where do you even think we even fall in that? It, it's, I mean, everybody's trying to get an invite. So does that mean we're at the point where the, the supply of artists is higher than the current demand? And will that change? So. Don't, don't, you, don't you think right now there's more artists than there are collectors? I, I would imagine that. 
uh, that's it's hard to say. I mean, they're so secretive as well, kind of. Yeah, they're they're just and there's kind more of all... collectors coming into the space. I mean, that's one of my favorite things about uh, Winkleman uh, is like when he came in, like and like. I think Matt Matt was saying that like he's like seeing some of his friends make X amount and he's getting like jealous and foam over it. I just like eating it up. I literally see people making this money and I'm just thrilled because this is what our industry deserves. Yes. And so like I don't have an ounce of jealousy. I couldn't be happier. Like and that's like tr- straight from my heart. I could not be happier. I think jealousy is the wrong word because you're happy. You just kind of wish that you could do it too. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. No, I, I get that. It's not like he wishes they didn't get it. Right. Um, but but yeah, it's I, and so like because of those kind of big drops also, I think we all win. And I think that's the way you have to look at it. It's like, yeah, people's getting in people getting into Christie's is a win for all of us. Do you make the millions that he's going to make from it? No, but now that outlet is available to you. But you do know you think where like, it wasn't before? Let's just say all these people get in, right? All these people mm-hmm. get into the space and everybody's got their invites to whatever platform it is. At that point, is there a surplus of artists or do you think more collectors during this are coming into the space and that it's just going to continue to flow? Will the will we catch up with that demand or or, i'm sorry will we like flip the other way will there all of a sudden be more collectors to the point where all these artists are definitely needed i think it's going to always be i feel like it's always going to be even i think there's always going to be equal amount of collectors to artists and i think there's just going to be tears you know and and it's like i would love to own a picasso painting but i know i can't afford it so i guess i can like, I also like this artist, you know, and I can't afford that. And I would like to have that on my wall as well. You know, so I, I think there's definitely going to be tears and people that like, I mean, I, I would love a, a share of Bitcoin right now, you know, but it's yeah. like, do I want to spend, you know, that that money? And it's like, eh, I don't really feel like shelling out 40K or I can't. I mean, I've, I know you can get like you don't have to buy a whole share, but like, right. just let's play the game. Um, and so it's like, I don't have 40K, but. Ethereum, I could get a whole share of Ethereum, right? You know, or you know, or or any of these other ones, you know, any any of the altcoins that you know that we're into as well. And it's like, so that's why I think there's always going to be a space for any artist, any like whatever level you think you're at, because the mind and the genius of a lot of the people in the crypto space, in the crypto space in general, they've been doing super high risk deals for years right. at this point and like it's a this hard thing to wrap your, for them yeah it's a hard thing for a lot of people to wrap your minds around but it's like they're throwing thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars around and losing and making and and like it's just this way of life for them right now yeah. and they also like altcoins where it's like hey we could throw in i think this altcoin is going to be successful let's throw 20k at this let's throw 50k 100 whatever a thousand dollars and take a chance that in five years from now that it's going to be the next, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever it might be right. or just something different. And they make that. And so I think there's going, there's definitely a, a spot for artists of all levels because the, a lot of the collectors that are savvy in the space also think about investment and they want to, they, they also love art and they want to find artists that are up and coming. They want to yeah. find artists that they think are going to blow up and they want to be on that track and saying, I knew that artist was going to be killer yeah. and I invested that money. I think that is super, super dope. And that's for everybody. That's for absolutely everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what about music moving into this industry too? Is it, is it going to be, as big with music is it going to be more collaborations where is that headed i think it's got to be collaborations obviously i I want it to be collaborations i disagree but go ahead yeah i i I think it's going to be collaborations but i it could be because i want it to be collaborations too. yeah Yeah. (laughs) Um, because you know right now it's like the visual has to come with the music like and and i think there's like ways around it. i mean even like the kings of leon thing right they have like the full album then they have uh, another tier package that comes with uh 
front row tickets to end all of their concerts for life. That's funny. And then the third Jeez. one is like a full music video paired with the vision, like paired with the audio. And I'm like, that's dope. I feel like you can't cut out the visual though. I, I from what I see, the collectors are very much into the visual aspect. And I see, uh, or I've seen ones that didn't really focus on the visual, not mm. do as well as yeah. I, I think collectively all the ones that didn't have a visual didn't do nearly as well as the ones that did have a visual paired with it. Yeah. What do you think yeah. Matt? Well, when you're talking about NFTs and stuff like that, I'm not thinking just about like selling it on a art space. You know, when we're talking about audio, I'm thinking about you're minting that to uh, the blockchain saying that I physically own this, you know, this, uh, this, uh, like a song, this a album, track or, right? Yeah. So the, the, the cool thing about smart contracts and this whole stuff is like, it has the ability to also, you know, combat piracy as well, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. if you're not, they could build a way to where you link your MetaMask or whatever, whatever wallet to Spotify, you know, or to some iTunes player or something like that. And then you physically have that stuff, you know, you physically have that, you own that album, right? Yeah, it could, it could help. And you have the ability to copyright. resell it to someone else, but then you actually physically lose that, you know, from your wallet. So you mm -hmm. can't listen to it again unless you physically own it. I think that is going to be, that's going to be the new thing that, uh, audio people are looking at and looking mm. into, you know, because piracy, they got to get out of their they got to get out of their record label deals. That's what's yeah. going to yeah. happen. Yeah, Absolutely. because they're sure. still getting totally screwed. So they For all sure. they all have to figure out how to get out of that, and so they can they can get the power back to them right. as well. And, and think about this, you know, you're 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 a little artist, right? And you've got like a single or something out on on Spotify. And you say, hey, you can buy my entire album on NFT, just link it to this player. Whoever can come up with the player and can come up with the wallet that links the two, you're solid. That's a yeah. million dollars. That's a billion dollar idea right there. Yeah, you copyright's know? gonna be absolutely huge. When do you think that's gonna come into effect? Where like where like you couldn't like the, use your Google like image on Google without it being blocked. Like you couldn't it's gonna be, it. It's gonna be a while. Like, no, it's copyright. It's gonna be it, to the, the point the where biggest, everything is minted. And in order to do yes. that, it, it's gotta be a lot faster and of course environmentally friendly. It, that's environmentally not, friendly yeah. and it also has to be like almost free, you know? Mm -hmm. because because right now the uh, this goes back to what i was talking about earlier the minting prices are ridiculous you know i can give away my stuff for a dollar but it still costs someone 55 dollars on top of that to buy it yeah sucks, we're talking about you know? more in a microtransaction game where let's say you want to buy an album it's actually minting a copy of it for you it's not saying like it's some rare mm -hmm. piece it's minting your copy that yeah. you paid ten dollars for. It's like an open edition, right? That is constantly open or something that allows someone to buy a new copy of that. Yes. you know, and then you've got the 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 thing that plays it and all this other stuff that you know keeps it all in one place. Yeah. But then I think we're just talking about probably two different things because then we're saying that like then that doesn't really have a high value, right? Because no, not, it's no, about I'm, scarcity. It's mainly about the, just the technology. It's whatever you can technology. buy it for, yeah. you know? That yeah. basically becomes the price. If it's $20 for an album on there and in the secondary marketplace, you know, the CD warehouse, if it will be, <laughs> you know, of NFT audio, you know, if someone's selling it for $5, there you go. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. Brodeur, tell us about this uh, webinar. Yeah, so uh, so for for Azo, I think it, it, there you have to register for it, and that's the uh, that's the the company um, that I'm ambassador for right now as well. And if you go, we've got like a, a whole big announcement of like things that we're going to talk about. It'll be after my drop, um, and so if like you want to learn more about you know pretty much everything we've talked about today, and like go go even further with it in the NFT space and and kind of my my. What, how I've wrapped around my my head around it and invested like I've I've been crazy invested in this right now, um, but we're also going to talk about other things too, you know, and just like being being a better artist and creating um, and and 
you know, how, everything about the digital art world, because they're, like I said, they're, they're really into, you know, all the arts and, uh, and making kind of a big wave. Um, so it, it should be a, a really good, really good talk on their platform. So I definitely say register for that. In addition, um, I did not give away nearly like I just scratched the surface of like my drop on the 15th. So like definitely follow this week because mm -hmm. there's like a lot of other crazy elements to my yes. drop. And oh, like, yeah, see, there's there's lots of stuff you haven't mentioned yet. Yeah. And so I'll, yeah. I'll be like trickling them out. So like the name change, like that was just that's a big one because I don't know. Um, I felt like it was uh, like it, like I did it for me. But and I was like, I don't think anyone anyone else that's like kind of like you know, already established, um, has like decided to just up and change your name. It was so funny. Like when, after I decided I was going to do this, I heard, um, G monk and Beeple on a podcast for FITC. I guess it was the conference, but it was like mm -hmm. live uh, video. And I think G monk and Beeple were like, yeah, like don't change your name. Like that'd be suicide. No one, you shouldn't do it. G monk was yeah. saying, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, damn, I already, I already <laughs> Too knew late. that I was going to do yeah. it. You know, yeah. like I hadn't told anyone I wasn't accepted to any platform yet. I was like, but I'm definitely doing it like period. Um, and I was going to do it regardless of whether I was on there. Yeah. But like, so the drop, it's definitely uh, the first and the last. There's there's more. There's there's something that there's other things that make it like definitely very unique to the space. Um, I'm ripping my heart out for it. Let's just say that. Yeah. 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 That's good. It's exciting. Yep. Well, we've gone uh, three hours and ten minutes at this point. Yeah. So congrats to everyone who's still with us. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? If you're still with us, why? Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. If people, uh, are we done? Are we done with the drop? Is that it? We I done? think we're done with Is the drop. Else to co cover? Oh, Someone go drop. buy my Beeple uh, infected number forty. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll All love right. you forever. All right. Well, thanks for watching The Drop, everybody. Yeah. Every week here on the MoGraph Podcast. Okay. If if people want to I find you... I need an you, outro or something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if, if people want to find you online, where can they find you online on all the things? For, uh, uh, for now, at least. For now, it's uh, at Locked and Loading. Uh, and then uh, it's it's going to change. Um, I, I, it, you're not going to be able to buy my handle, so you don't know exactly what it's going to be. But uh -huh. so if you're like, how's he how's he getting this brilli? Um, it'll be sl slightly altered. Um, and and yeah, and stay tuned. There's definitely going to be more announcements, and I'll have a I, I've got a special website for everyone to come and check everything out on. Uh, so it's all very clear because there's a lot of pieces to this to this job. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I I do have to say. Throughout all this craziness, I think one of the best things for me that has come out of it, besides the appreciation for art as art a little bit more, would be the connections that I have made with a lot of other artists again. And not Absolutely. just not just the meeting Absolutely. new people, because that's been great, but also reconnecting with some old friends and spending yeah. more time with old friends in Discord. And just even if we're just chilling on video doing nothing, it's just been kind of a fun thing to to reconnect and and hang and and learn and discuss uh just overall it's hectic but it's been great so yeah that's how totally. i feel too yeah totally anything else i feel like the, <laughs> huh. the, just the inspiration to do more art that's been the big yes. thing for me you know yeah. yep. like yeah. to actually do get out there and do more art i feel like my piece actually oh what did we had we made meaning. the joke <laughs> We made the joke the other day that like uh, when you were talking about like is Beeple crypto 888 or yeah. whatever, like, you mm -hmm. know, that this entire NFT thing has all been like choreographed by Beeple in order <laughs> to start getting people to do dailies. Yeah, that's the only reason. <laughs> that's it is. The, the, the offer of $100 just wasn't enough. Yeah, you right. Come up with a massive scheme. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's funny. All right. Well, cool. I think that's about it. it we're going to get out of here. You can rate us on iTunes, leave a review. You can also subscribe on your podcatcher of choice. It helps get our ratings up. Subscribe to our newsletter. It just went out. You can catch all the things that are going on with us. Don't forget, next week we will be off, and we'll put the Thursday Ooh. show that hopefully everybody will be joining us for live into that feed. 
You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the MoGraph logo tee, the Paul Bab classic Feel the Bab 2020 shirt, all the profits from that. Go to Doctors Without Borders. The Render Things long uh, long sleeve t-shirt, blah, the, the, the Render Things t-shirt, <laughs> hoodie, and long sleeve tee, the That Render is Fire shirt, which you are only allowed to wear, ironically, unless, unless you're, you're Shams. Shams. I, I yeah. and she can afford to buy one of those shirts now. She can buy one. <laughs> she can buy one. <laughs> and the MoGraph blandishment shirt, which is what I got right here, mm-hmm. MoGraph graphic blandishment shirt, which you can check out. There's a couple different variations and colors and things. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com. Come by, come say hi, come hang out in the Slack. Come talk to us on the things and go buy these other artists' artwork and support them. Anything else that I forgot? That's I don't know. It. I'm sure there's plenty. I'm sure I'll, we'll have another two hour drop, yeah. a two hour, 15 minute drop. You know, yeah. It's only supposed to be 10 yeah. minutes, right? 10 minutes. Now, this e- is the eventually, whole show. again, eventually it will be shorter. This is, this yeah, is, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Once it, once it, once the, the craziness kind of, you know, subsides a bit. Yeah. And this, I, I feel like this is going to become, this is eventually just become going to become like a marketplace type thing. It'll you be know? a regular Where segment. Where people can post their stuff. Yeah. Like once, once people are able to just like post their, their work or whatever, you know, it's like, okay, I've, I've got these for sale, you know, yeah. go pick one up or yeah. whatever. These and won't it's like, be hour and oh, a half They're long still segments. doing client work <laughs> and stuff like that. You know? when, we've norm- when we've normalized it, that artists make hundreds of thousands right. of dollars overnight. Right. It's, right. Like, right. it's like, oh, yeah, six figures, good. Very nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like uh, Render retweeted us and said, Matt and Dave lied. They lied. Yeah. It was supposed to be a <laughs> short lied. segment from now on, and, and it yeah. said it's an awesome, long, whatever. You know, it'll change. I don't know. This was good. This was a good yeah. segment, though. I liked it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're gonna keep doing fun, this for a little talk. while and just m- move with the industry. We're just reporting on yep. what's going on. So, yeah, I know. I think my favorite part of this whole thing was hearing what Matt said about like it's just invigorated him to just create more. That yeah. makes me like super thrilled to hear that. I'm super happy yeah. about that. Yeah, I may start doing dailies. Who knows? <laughs> Could happen. Go. Yeah, you that'll sell my time, favorites. Right? Yeah, I yeah. know, right? Sure. <laughs> cool. All right. Got to well, finish those taxes first. Yeah. <laughs> the finger thing means the The finger tax. thing means the taxes. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take off. We'll catch you on the next one. Yep. Enjoy your spring break, everybody. We'll see you Thursday. Yeah. Until next Thanks, time. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sticking in for that long, all of you watching yeah. on the stream. And until next time, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And I'm Dave, locked and loading for a little bit more. Have a good one. <laughs> Later, yo. No, nothing like a short three hour and 13 minute show. Is there any other way? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs>